Hello there and a very warm welcome to this course on PowerPoint 2019. My name's Deborah Ashby and I'm going to be your host for this course. I'm an IT trainer and a Microsoft subject matter expert, so hopefully that qualifies me to be talking through this course with you today. And I'm very excited to be teaching you all of the new features and wonderful things that you can do in PowerPoint 2019. Now, just to explain, if you are coming from an earlier version of PowerPoint, this course will probably suit you fine if you are using PowerPoint 2013 or 2016. There are some differences in the new version, but the differences are very minor. So there is a lot of crossover with the last two versions. So if you do happen to have one of those older versions, but you're going through this course, then the majority of this course is going to be absolutely fine for you to work through. I will try and highlight as we go through if there is anything that I'm telling you that's specific to PowerPoint 2019. So just be aware of that as we go through. Now, before we jump into the content, I just want to give you an idea as to what to expect in this course, because you're probably very curious. This might be the first time that you're doing an online course, so you might have a bit of trepidation. But trust me, I'm not going to throw you in at the deep end. We are going to start right at the beginning with the basics. We're going to build that skill level up until we're pretty much getting towards those advanced topics. So let me just give you a rundown of what to expect. Now, this isn't by all means a comprehensive list. These are just some high level topics that I've put onto a list. We're going to be covering a lot more than this, as you'll see when we go through. But we are going to start out with the basics. So the very basics of navigation, creating blank presentations and starting all from scratch. I'm going to talk you through some best practices when it comes to using PowerPoint. So best practice regarding things like colors, animation, bullet points, how much text to use, what kind of imagery you should be using. All really, really important things to consider when you're putting together a PowerPoint presentation. We're of course going to look at how you can add in new slides and the different slide layouts you can use and how you can edit those slides and build up a really nice looking presentation. We're going to add some pizzazz with graphics. So we're going to add pictures and icons and 3D models, which are new to 2019. We're going to add animation to make it more engaging and also media files like video and audio. And finally, at the end of the course, I'm going to show you how you can present your presentation to an audience. So lots of really interesting stuff in here. I am very excited about taking you through this course. I absolutely love PowerPoint and I hope by the end of this course, you will too. So all that remains is for us to jump into the next section where we'll just have a quick word about the exercise files we're going to use in this course and then we'll get started. So I'll see you in the next section. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to be taking a look at navigating around a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm going to just introduce to you some of the main aspects of the screen and some things that can really help improve your efficiency when we're working in PowerPoint. Now, what you can see on the screen here, I currently have what we call normal view showing on the screen. And in normal view, what you can see are the main slides. So this is the slide that I'm currently clicked on. And I can also see in the left hand pane, I have little mini previews of the other slides that make up my presentation. Now, as I said, this is what we classify as normal view. And this in general is the view that you work in when you're making edits to your PowerPoint presentation. Now, obviously, with a lot of PowerPoint presentations, the end aim is to display those presentations. So either we might be presenting to an audience or we might be wrapping it up in a PowerPoint presentation for somebody else to run. And if you think about it, if I was presenting this to an audience, I don't really want them to see the view that I currently have. So I really just want them to focus on the current slide. I don't want them to be able to see all of the other slides down the side or the ribbon or anything along those lines. Now, in order to do that, what we do is we switch our PowerPoint presentation into what we call slideshow view. And again, there are a couple of different ways that you can switch between different views. The first one I'm going to show you is probably the simplest. 
If you cast your eyes down to the bottom right hand corner, you'll see down here we have a number of little icons. And as I hover over them, you can see that one says normal, which is the view that we're in now. We have slide sort of view, which I'll talk about a bit later. We have reading view. Again, I'll talk about that a bit later. And then finally, we have slideshow view. So let's click on that one. And now this takes me into what the audience is going to see. I can then easily navigate between my slides so I can move them on or I can move them back depending on what I want to show at that particular time. Now, in order to navigate through my presentation, again, there are a couple of different ways that I can do this. I can click my mouse to move me onto the next slide. Or alternatively, what I can do is just use the arrow keys on my keyboard either the one going to the right to move forward or the one going to the left to move back. So it's really up to you which one of those methods you choose. If I want to jump out of my presentation, so maybe I finished it or maybe I want to make some edits, I can just press the escape key on my keyboard and that will take me back to that normal view. By using those icons in the bottom right hand corner. There is an alternative way of moving through your views, and that is by using the ribbon. So again, if I go up to the view ribbon, you can see the first group there, presentation views, that has normal, outline, slide sorter, and I have a couple of other views in there as well, notes page and reading pane. So I can easily switch between my views from there as well. Now, what you might notice there is that we don't actually have a slideshow view you'll find that on a separate tab. So again, we have a tab here called Slideshow, and you'll see in this first group here called Start Slideshow, we have a choice. We can start our slideshow from the beginning. So if I was to click that, it starts it from the beginning, and remember, Escape to come out. And you'll also notice as if I hover over, there is a shortcut key to start the slideshow from the beginning. So sometimes that's a little bit easier and more efficient as well. So the shortcut key here would be F5. I could also choose to start my slideshow from the current slide. So what we mean by that is whichever one I'm clicked on. So if I was clicked on slide four and I was to choose from current slide, it's going to run the slideshow from that particular slide and escape to come out. So a couple of different options in there for you when it comes to running your slideshow. So now I'd just like to talk a little bit about the actual slides that you're using. I would say that when you are creating a presentation, it's really important to think about the layout of your presentation. And it's also really important to have a title slide to introduce the topic to the audience. So you can see here in my example, we have Wanderlust Travel, and then I have a subtitle underneath, Unleash the Explorer Within. And that really just introduces the topic that I'm about to talk about to the audience. Another thing to watch out for when you're creating PowerPoint presentations is to be consistent with the fonts that you're using. So I would advise against having lots of different types of fonts. You really just want to keep it consistent so that it flows throughout the presentation. Now, one of the things we're going to talk about over the next few modules is slide layout. And I just want to show you a little bit about what I mean by that. If I go to slide two, you'll see what I have here is a title. So where it says, why choose us? And then underneath, I have some bullet points. And this slide is actually a completely different layout to the previous slide. So this first one is what we call a title slide layout. And this second one is a title and content, the content being these bullet points down here. And this is something I'm going to delve into in the next few modules to show you exactly all the different types of slide layout that you have. Now, again, when it comes to titles, I would always recommend that you do put a title at the top of each slide. And the reason for that is if you imagine you're giving a presentation, you have an audience. It's fairly common for people to get slightly distracted. Maybe they look at their phone. Maybe they just zone out for a moment. You want to make sure that whenever they come back to you, that they know exactly what you're talking about at any given time and they can quickly pick up again from where they left off. So that's why it's so important to make sure that each slide has some kind of title or something that indicates what that slide is all about. Now, as I said, what we've got here is a title and content slide, and I currently have some bullet points in that slide. 
And it's worth noting that you can have up to five levels of bullets in a slide. So here I have what we call first level bullets. And if I was to move to slide three, you'll see I have some first and some second level bullets. In this case, they're both the same. You might find with some templates or layouts that the second uh, indented bullet is a slightly different icon. But in this case, they're the same. But you can distinctly see that there is a difference between those first and second bullets by the indentation. Let's take a look at some other things that we have in this presentation. If I go to slide four, again, I have my title at the top. And what I've got on this slide is something we call smart art. And again, this is something I'm going to go through with you a bit later on in the course. But this is just a nice way to add some kind of process flow. Or maybe if you want to add an organizational chart or something along those lines, smart art is something that's a really good thing to use for doing those kinds of things. So you can see here I've got it illustrating the booking process. Underneath that, I also have some images. Now, these are actually a fairly new thing that have been added to PowerPoint 2019. These are called icons, and you'll find them on the insert ribbon, along with all of your drawings and your shapes. And this is a library full of really nice little icons that you can add into your presentation, and they're all completely editable. So if I click on one of the icons just there, you'll see at the top, I now get the graphics format contextual ribbon, which will allow me to make any changes I want to that particular icon. You can see there I can change the color. I can do all sorts of things with it. So icons are a really nice way to add a visual element into your presentation. Let's look at the next slide, slide five. Here again, I have that title at the top, but this time I've inserted a couple of pictures and I might have inserted them from the web or I may have had them stored off onto my PC. I'm going to show you how to insert pictures using both of those techniques. Move on to slide six. Now I have something slightly different on here. And again, this is a feature that's relatively new in PowerPoint 2019. And these are what we call 3D models. And they're actually pretty cool. What I can do is if I click on this backpack, for example, you see I get this little icon in the middle, which is a, a rotation. And it's actually a 3D image, so I can rotate it any way I like and set it just so. So that's a really, again, a really nice way to add a high quality, I guess you would call a vector graphic that you can rotate into your PowerPoint presentation. So those are quite fun to explore as well. Let's move down to the next slide. Again, we have something slightly different in this one. We have the title, but then we have a chart. So if you're used to using charts in Excel or inserting charts, then this works in a fairly similar way. You'll see when we do start to insert charts, you're actually using a kind of preview of an Excel spreadsheet in order to get the figures in to create this chart in PowerPoint. So that's a really nice way of displaying, in this case, sales figures by country. Moving down to slide eight, again, something slightly different. We have our title about us. And then what I have underneath there is just, again, some smart art, but I'm using it in a slightly different way than before. I'm using it in combination with a picture. And again, you'll see when we go into the smart art library, you'll see there are a few layouts in there or a few diagrams you can insert, which also allow you to insert pictures. So again, a really nice way of illustrating that about us section. And finally, this is just my finished slide. So I'm encouraging them to book now. I'm letting them know that they'll get a 20% discount if they're a new customer. And you can see that's a bullet point. And again, I've just inserted a picture directly into my slide. So lots of different elements that make up my PowerPoint presentation, which make it into a really nice visually appealing presentation that flows. It's consistent in its color and in its font. Now we are going to move into how you edit presentations. And just remember that if you want to edit a particular slide, all you need to do is when you're in normal view, which we are now, just make sure you're clicked on the slide that you want to edit. And then you can go to town and do whatever you like within that particular slide. So that's the basics of navigating around a first PowerPoint presentation. 
In the next section, we're going to move on to looking at the desktop and I will be giving you an overview of the desktop screen so you know exactly what all the buttons do, which will help you navigate and create your PowerPoint presentations slightly more efficiently. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, I'm going to give you an overview of the desktop screen and the views. Now, what we're looking at here is that same PowerPoint presentation that we've been looking at in the previous modules, the Wanderlust Travel slide deck. And I just want to start by giving you a quick tour around the desktop screen so you understand what the ribbons and all of the icons do. So starting right at the top, you'll see where we have wanderlusttravel.pptx. So this is the name of your PowerPoint presentation. It's the name that you've saved this presentation as. And we're going to be looking at how to save presentations in the following modules. Underneath that, we have our menus or our ribbons. So you can see here currently I'm clicked on home and that gives me different groups which contain different groups of commands that I can use. You'll see here I have insert as I move across, which will allow me to insert things into my presentation. And then I have all of these different ribbons that I can use. I'm not going to go through all of them right at the moment. Just be aware that there they are located just underneath that title. Now, if we move just below our ribbons, you'll see that I have a group of icons just here. Now, these icons are actually located on what we call the Quick Access Toolbar. And the Quick Access Toolbar is pretty much what it says on the tin. It allows you to very quickly access commands that you use frequently. And you'll have different commands on this toolbar. There is a, a default set of commands, so you might have undo, redo, and save. But you can customize this toolbar to contain any command that's available to you in PowerPoint. Now, if I go across to the little drop down arrow at the end, and when I hover over, it says customize quick access toolbar. If I click on that, what you'll see is a drop down menu, which is showing me the 10 most frequently used commands that I might want to add to my quick access toolbar. And you can see that some of them have ticks next to them, which means that they're already added onto that toolbar. So, for example, if I find myself uh, emailing presentations fairly frequently, instead of hunting around for the email button within PowerPoint, I could just add it to my quick access toolbar. And then I have a quick way of very quickly emailing that presentation. Now, it's worth noting that I'm not only limited to adding these few commands to my quick access toolbar, I can add any command. And again, there are a couple of different ways that I can do that. Let's go for the first simpler way. And that is if you find a command on any of the ribbons. So, for example, if I jump to the insert ribbon and maybe I decide that I add quite a lot of pictures into my PowerPoint presentations, if I want to add the pictures icon or command to my quick access toolbar, all I need to do is right click and select add to quick access toolbar. And you can see there it is on the end. Another way that I can add commands to the quick access toolbar is again, utilizing that drop down arrow and going to more commands. Now this will actually take me into the PowerPoint options and you can see that I have quick access toolbar highlighted in the list on the left hand side. What I've then got is in this first list where it says popular commands, I then have all of the commands which belong to that popular commands group. So these would be the ones that are used most frequently. If I want a list of all of the commands available in PowerPoint, again, I can click the drop down and I can select all commands and that will give me a very, very long list of every command available in PowerPoint in alphabetical order. And what I can then do is I can then find the command that I want. So maybe it's this one here, align text. And I can add that to my quick access toolbar directly from here. So if you glance over to the right hand side, you'll see it says at the top, customize quick access toolbar. And then I have listed there all of the commands that are currently on that toolbar. And all I would need to do is to click the add button in the middle, which will move a line text over to the right hand side of the screen. Click on OK 
and you can now see I have that align text button on my quick access toolbar. So a couple of different ways that you can customize that to really increase or improve your efficiency when working in PowerPoint. Now, if we move up to the top right hand corner of the screen, you can see you've got my name there. So that's telling me the account that I'm currently logged in with. I also have a little ribbon display options button. And if I click it, you'll see I get a drop down with some other options in there. So I can choose to hide the ribbon. And that just gives me more screen real estate with which to work on my PowerPoint presentation. Now, I'm not saying that this is something I use all that frequently because obviously you can't see your ribbons or your commands, but it is there if you just need a little bit of extra space. Now to get those ribbons back, if I click the icon in the top for ribbon display options, and I can select show tabs and commands. It's worth noting that there is another option in there which will just allow you to show the tabs so I can see those tabs but not the ribbons below until I click on them. Okay, so it's really entirely up to you with regards to how you display those ribbons and tabs. I then have next to that option, I have the minimize button which will just minimize my presentation down into the system tray. And then alternatively, I also have the restore down, which will just make my screen a little bit smaller. And then of course, I always have my close button in the top corner. Now moving to the main bulk of our screen. So in the middle, obviously I have the slide that I currently have selected and you can see the rest of my slides in the pane on the left hand side. We covered this in the previous module. And right down in the bottom left hand corner, I have a little bit of information that I might find useful. So it's telling me, that currently I'm clicked on slide one of nine. If I click on number four, it's gonna to change to slide four of nine. It's telling me that there are no spelling errors so far found in this presentation. And it's also telling me my language. So currently I have my language set to English United States. Now moving across to the right hand side of the screen. The first thing you'll see here is something that says notes. Now if I click on notes, you'll see that I get a click to add notes pane display at the bottom. Now it's not too big at the moment and you'll see if I hover over the border or the line, I do get that double headed arrow. So I can just drag my notes section up if I want to. And if you're not familiar with the notes section in PowerPoint, all it means is that you can click in here and you can add any note that you like related to the slide. So I might want to say, uh, let's keep it simple the booking process. Now you might be wondering why this is actually useful and it is worth noting that any notes that you make on your slides don't show when you run the slideshow so your audience aren't going to see all of your notes. Now the good thing about notes is that you can print them separately to your slides and have them as speakers notes which is really helpful if you're giving a presentation. You can also choose to print the slide with the notes below. Not only is that useful for you, but also for the people that are attending your presentation. You might want to hand them out um, your slide and have the notes below so that they've got those notes. Alternatively, what you could do is you could just leave this notes area blank and print off the slide and the notes, and that will give them a space underneath the slide to write any notes that they want. So notes are a really useful feature for your audience and also for the presenter. Now, if you don't want any notes on your PowerPoint presentation, you can get rid of this notes pane. And the way that I always do it is I just drag it all the way down right to the bottom. The next button that you have is a comments button. So if I click comments, I get a pane pop out on the right hand side. And this is where I can add any notes or any comments that I want other people to see. And this is particularly useful if you're collaborating with others on a presentation. I can add my notes in there. Somebody else, my colleague, might go into the presentation and they can see my notes and also add their own comments as well. So comments can be a really useful little function to add. Then next to comments, we're sticking in the bottom right hand corner. This is where we then have our views. And if you remember, we went through views in the previous module. But let's take a look at some of the ones that we didn't take a look at earlier. Now, normal view, as we know, that's the view we're in now. This is where we would most likely come to make any edits to our slides. The next view we have is slide sorter view. And this gives you a completely different way of displaying your slides or looking at your slide deck. And 
The way that I tend to utilize this is I tend to come into here if I want to do a lot of rearranging of slides. So if I want to maybe move slides around, I just find it a lot easier to see in this view. It is worth noting that you can still move slides around when you're in normal view, again, just by dragging and dropping them where you want to be. But I tend to get a better overview if I'm in slide sort of view. Another reason you might come into this view would be when you start adding animations or transitions onto your slides. This is the view where you can see if a slide has any kind of transition on it. And what I mean by transition is the way that the slides move between each other. You might have some kind of effect on there. And you can see the effects when you're in slide sort of view. Now, I don't have any effects applied at the moment. I will do later on, which is why you can't currently see that. But you'll see what I mean as we move through this course. The next view that we have is reading view. And again, this is just another way of viewing your slides. So again, it makes it nice and big on the screen. I can click my mouse to move through my slides. Alternatively, I can use my arrows, so my left arrow or my right arrow to move through my slides. And then finally, we have that slideshow view, which again is the view you're most likely to use if you're presenting to an audience. And remember, to come out of slideshow view, you just want to press the escape key on your keyboard. And then finally, what we have on the end here is a zoom control. So we have plus and minus, and it says 100% currently. Let me go back into normal view for a moment. And I'm just going to use the zoom slider. And you can see as I zoom in and out, it makes my presentation or my slide bigger or smaller. So you can really kind of customize it to what suits you. And very finally on the end, we have this little square which says fit slide to current window. So if I click on that, it's just going to resize my slide to exactly the right fit for the window that I'm using. So again, that can be quite a useful thing just to get that sizing perfect. So that's about it. That's an overview of the desktop and some of the buttons and icons that you'll find on the desktop. In the next section, I'm going to set you an exercise and it's a very simple exercise. I just want you to open the file attached and use slide sorter and some of the different ways of moving around just to get familiar with it before we move on to the next section. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. It's now time for exercise one, and this is going to be a very simple exercise. All I want you to do is to open this file called wanderlusttravel.pptx, and I want you to run the slideshow as I'm doing here. And what I want you to do is just to pay close attention to the slides and the different layouts of the slides, and also close attention to the bulleted items. And really the idea here is just to get a feel of the different slide layouts and how you can add different elements into your slides and also just to practice some of those navigation techniques. So feel free to run the slideshow, move back and forth, come out of the slideshow, go into slide sort of view, all of those types of things. So really just become comfortable with the presentation that you're looking at before we move on into some of the more intermediate modules. So that's it, very straightforward. I will see you in the next section. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. Now, before we jump into creating a brand new presentation, I just want to take a little bit of time to review some presentation tips and guidelines that are really gonna help you when it comes to creating that very first PowerPoint presentation. And the thing I'd like to talk to you about first is the use of colors. Now, when it comes to the use of color in your presentation, this is something you really need to give some thought to, preferably before you start creating your presentation. It's really important that the color scheme that you go with, that everything ties together. So from the headings, the background colors, any bullets that you use, all of the colors should tie together nicely so that it looks like a cohesive presentation. And when it comes to the types of colors that you should be using, I would always say that subtle colors create trust with your audience. So we're talking about colors like blues, browns, blacks. 
Also, bright colours tend to create a dramatic impact. So if you really want something to stand out and draw people's attention, then red is always a good colour to use for that. It's also good to consider where you're going to be doing your presentation. So if you're going to be doing this or presenting it to an audience, it's worth considering the light in the room. And you want to make sure that you're using colours that can be easily seen by everyone in the audience. So if it's a particularly bright room, maybe you want to darken those colours. Or if it's quite a dark room, you might want to use more like a white background and dark text. So it's worth checking out the room first just to see the kinds of colours that you should use in your presentation. I would also say to use good contrast colours in your presentation as well. And what I mean by that is if you have, for example, a blue background, then something like neon green font is not going to look good on a blue background. You want to maybe stick to a light background with dark text. So, of course, white and black is always good for that or other good contrast colours. So really think about that and make sure that the text is clear so that people can see it. Another important point is to never use red and green next to each other. And this is for people who suffer with uh, colour blindness. So red and green can easily be confused and they can also tend to look the same to people who have uh, problems distinguishing uh, red from green. So make sure that you don't put them next to each other on a presentation. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's important to keep your colours consistent throughout the presentation. If you don't, it just ends up like it's something that you've thrown together without too much thought. So do make sure that everything flows through nicely. So now let's move on to talking about fonts that you use in your presentation. As a general rule, your title should be size 44, which might seem quite large to you. But again, remember, if you're presenting this in particularly in a large room, then you're going to want to make sure that that font is big enough so that people even in the back of the room can see it clearly. So a general guideline would be title size 44 and any subtitles that you have size 32. If you've just got regular text on the screen, then size 28 is good. So the text that you can see on my screen right now for these bullet points is all size 28. In general, I would steer clear of very small fonts. So for example, if you were working in Word and you were typing a document, you might find that font size 10, 11 or 12 is perfectly fine for that. But when it comes to your PowerPoint presentation, you want to make it a lot bigger. I would also say don't use more than three different fonts per presentation. In general, when I'm doing a presentation, I tend to stick to the same font throughout just because I think that looks better. But if you do require more than one font, then try not to go above three. Otherwise, again, it can start to look a little bit messy and a little bit like you've just thrown it together. Let's now talk about words. So the words that you have on your slides. Again, another general guideline is six to eight words per line. The thing that I've found when I see people's presentations is that people tend to like to put everything they're going to say on the slide. And really, that's not the intention of PowerPoint. PowerPoint is really there to serve as a reminder, some bullet points, some notes for you. So keep it short, keep it sweet. It's just there so that you can elaborate on the points that are on the screen. So keep it short. If you do have a lot of text that you don't necessarily want to put on the slide, then it's a good idea to utilize the handout so you can add more text on there if required and you can hand those out to your audience either before the session or after the session. And I always say that less text is better. You really don't want to confront people with a wall of words. I think we've all heard that phrase death by PowerPoint when you're kind of sitting there in a presentation and all you have is this big screen full of words. It's quite hard to read what's on the screen and concentrate on what the speaker is saying. So less text is better. And a way that I kind of combat that when I'm doing a presentation is that I tend to use images instead of words. So I might have a nice big image on the screen that illustrates my point, And then I will talk through the image and I will say what I need to say without having it all written on the slide. So just some points there to consider when you're thinking about the placement of your words 
and what words you're going to put on your slides. Bullet points. Now, you can see here in this slide, I have some bullet points. And again, in general, four to six bulleted items per slide. You don't have to cram as many bulleted items on a slide as possible. If you do have quite a few, then please just use another slide, okay? And also remember that you can have up to five levels of bullets. Sometimes that's quite nice to use as well because it just gives it a little bit of structure. And again, to keep things consistent, if you're going to use some kind of picture or even a symbol like I have here, make sure you use the same bullet picture per level. Again, just to keep things consistent and flowing through. Templates. Now, again, I'm using a template here in this presentation and you may decide to choose one of the ones that are available in PowerPoint or you might have your own, maybe your own company template that you like to use. But in general, I tend to keep my templates really, really simple. I don't want too many bells and whistles and things that are going to distract away from my presentation. I also try to limit the number of lines, textures and other effects. I think there is a little bit of a temptation, particularly when we've just learned some new cool tricks in PowerPoint to try and add as much into our presentations as possible. And sometimes really the old adage, less is more. So keep it minimal, keep it simple. I'm a big fan of using images and graphics in my PowerPoint presentations. As I mentioned, sometimes I just like to have a large image on the screen and then talk through my points. So I would definitely recommend looking at the way that you can use graphics pictures, those icons, 3D models, and also charts to enhance the template and the presentation. And again, going back to text slides, try to avoid using more than three in a row. So again, don't just have 10 slides full of plain text to present to people. Try and break it up with the odd image slide as well, just to make it a little bit more interesting and prevent people from snoozing off when you're in the middle of your presentation. So that's it. Those are the major tips I have when creating presentations. What we're going to do in the next section is we're going to jump in and we're going to start creating our first PowerPoint presentation, bearing in mind those tips that we've just learned. So join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to take a look at creating a new presentation. Now, this might be the first time that you're ever creating a new presentation. It might be that you've edited presentations before. So if someone sent you a presentation, maybe you've been able to go in and make the required edits, but perhaps you've never created one from scratch. And that's what we're going to cover in this module. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can create a new presentation, and you can see here on the screen, I already have a blank presentation open. Now, what I can do from this point is I can go one of two ways. I can either apply a design to this blank presentation, make it look a little bit more interesting than it currently does. Or if I was creating from scratch, I could go to the file tab, which will take me into that backstage area and select the new option. And what you'll see there is a whole bunch of templates that you can select from. And these templates are actually organized into different categories. And you can see some suggested searches at the top here. So if I was looking for a template that was business related, I could click on business and it's going to search the database and show me a whole load of presentations that are suitable for business use. And you can see there, there's some really, really nice ones in PowerPoint 2019. They seem to get better with every new release of PowerPoint. So it really depends what you're looking for. Now, one thing I would say when you're trying to decide on a template to use is to really give a long, hard think to those rules, those tips and guidelines that we discussed in the previous module. And your template that you choose really should be suitable for your audience. So again, if it's a business presentation, you don't want to choose a template that's going to be too jokey or too casual or maybe has font which isn't appropriate. So just bear those tips in mind when you're trying to decide which template to use. Now, at this stage, I'm not going to choose one of these templates. I'm just going to click the arrow at the top to go back to my blank presentation. What I'm going to do instead is apply a design to this blank presentation that I have here. So I'm going to go to the design ribbon. And again, you can see I have a whole bunch of themes that I can choose from. And if I click the drop down arrow, 
This will show me all of the themes that I have access to. And as you hover over them, you'll see you get a live preview in the slideshow itself. So you get a really good idea as to what that's going to look like. Now I'm just going to apply this one here, which is called Iron. And what you'll notice is that now I have this theme applied, what I can do is if I decide that maybe I don't like the background color particularly, what you'll see is that when you apply a theme, you then get this additional group called Variants. And again, if I click the drop down, um, I can see for this one, there's only actually four variants, which we have listed there. I could change it to a blue theme instead. So it's essentially the same theme. I'm just changing that background color scheme to something a little bit different. And of course, as with everything, you can go in and customize even further if you wanted to. So again, if you didn't particularly like these colors, you could go in and define the colors that you want to use. But in this case, I'm fairly happy with using the blue one. Now, one thing that's worth remembering is that if you've already put several slides in the presentation and you've maybe changed the fonts, anything you have manually changed, applying a design theme may override that. So what I would suggest is that it is really best to pick your theme up front before you start making changes to any slides that you have. So that's a quick tip to bear in mind when you're thinking about applying themes to your presentation. So that's pretty much it. We have our two ways. We can either start with a new blank presentation. So let me go to File and go to New. And the blank presentation is literally what we started out with. So you can either start from this point and apply a design and then choose a variance. Or you can start with a template if you wanted to, a template of your choice by selecting it from the list. So now we know how to create a new presentation. What we're going to talk about in the next section is how we work with slides. So please join me for that. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In the previous section, we created a brand new presentation and you can see it here on the screen. It just has that design template that I applied showing. And what we want to do now in this section is to add some new slides. And the first slide in general in your presentation will always be a title slide. And you really do want to make sure that you don't delete this out, that you always have some kind of title slide. It acts as like a cover to a book, I guess you would say. So it gives the audience um, an idea of what the presentation is going to be about. And it's just nice to have up there if you're presenting this presentation, just to have it up on the screen behind you. Again, so the audience knows exactly what they're in for in the presentation. Now it's worth noting that you can have multiple title slides in the presentation if you like. So for example, your presentation might be about three different topics and you might want to have a title slide before each new topic begins. And that's perfectly fine. And we're gonna take a look at that later on in the course. But for now, we're gonna concentrate on this presentation. So what we have here is a title slide. And I'm just going to start by adding some text into that title slide. So it's a very simple case of clicking in the placeholder. And I'm going to say Wonderlust Travel. And you can see underneath it says click to add a subtitle. So again, I'm going to add a quick subtitle in here and just click away. And now I have a very nice looking title slide. So what I want to do now is I want to expand my presentation. I want to add another slide in. Now I've already got a title slide, so I don't want to add another one at this stage. So I'm going to go up to my home ribbon and in the slides group, you can see I have a drop down that says new slide. And what this is showing me is all of the different slide layouts that I have access to. So you can see the first one there, if I hover over, is Title Slide, and that's what I currently have applied in my presentation. I then have Title and Content, so this will allow me to add a title in, and then I have various different pieces of content that I can add into that slide as well. So that might be a picture, it might be a chart, it might be some kind of diagram. I then have a Section Header Slide, 
a two content slide. So again, if I want a title running across the top and then two separate pieces of content, I might want to use that one. I have a comparison slide layout, title only. I have a completely blank slide if I don't want any of the placeholders on there. I have content with caption, picture with caption, so on and so forth. Now it's worth noting that when you go into this new slide drop down, you might not necessarily see all of the slide layouts that I'm showing you right now. Some of these slide layouts are assigned to the different design templates. So depending on which design you've applied will determine which layouts you see down below. But these first ones at the top here are in general, the ones that you'll see in every single layout that you use. So for my next slide, I'm going to choose a title and content slide. And you can see there it's given me slide two in that left hand pane. And I now have two placeholders. So the first one is for my title and the second one is for my content. And it says I can add text so I could click there and I will have bullet pointed text. Or alternatively, I can choose to insert any of these elements into this slide. So it might be a table a chart, a smart art graphic, video, online pictures, or a picture which I can browse to on my PC. Now I'm going to add a title in here and I'm going to say, why choose us? And now what I'm going to do is add in some text. So I'm going to click where it says click to add text. And I'm going to say um, over 100 destinations. And it's worth noting that if you don't want this text to be bulleted, you can just click and also just turn off those bullets. So if you go up to the home ribbon and into the paragraph group, you can see currently I have my bullets turned on. If I just click that icon again, it will remove that bullet from the slide. But I'm actually quite happy having those bullets in. So I'm going to put it back. And I'm just going to add another bullet point. So when I hit my enter key, it's automatically going to give me another bullet on the same level as the previous one. So I'm going to say dedicated travel team. And as this is just an example, I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to insert yet another slide. So I'm going to go back up to new slide. And again, I'm going to select a title and content slide. And I'm going to click and add another title. So this one is going to be Wanderlust Travel Benefits. And my text here is going to be 20% discount for all new customers. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit the enter key, which again is going to give me that secondary bullet point. But what if I want a, a second level bullet? So if I want this one to be indented, so it looks like it comes beneath the line of text that I've just typed in. Well, it's very simple to do. All you need to do is press the tab key on your keyboard and that will tab that bullet in like so. Now, if I've done that and I then think to myself, actually, I don't want that to be a second level bullet. I'd like it to be a first level bullet. All I need to do is do shift and tab and that will move that back and make that a first level bullet. So just remember that tab key makes it a second or even a third level bullet and then shift tab to move back through those levels of bullets. So that's the basics of some slide layouts and also using those bullets and some shortcut keys for indenting your text. Now in the following sections, we're going to be doing things like inserting pictures, graphics, smart art, icons, all of that fun stuff. But for the time being, that's the end of this section. I will see you in the next one. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, I want to talk to you very quickly about saving a presentation because that is one thing that we haven't done yet. And the thing that you don't want to do is spend a lot of time working on a presentation, 
forget to save it and then maybe something happens and you lose all of your hard work. So we want to make sure that we save our presentation at the beginning and then we regularly save it so that we don't lose any of our most recent changes. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways and a couple of different saving locations. Now, before we get on to that, just following on from the previous section, I just want to show you a couple of little tips and tricks within these slides before we save. So essentially what I'm going to do is make a change to this presentation and then we're going to save it. Now, where we left off, we had these three slides that we've inserted with our different layouts. I just want to show you a really quick way of inserting a slide, but almost duplicating the slide layout. Now, as we've seen, if we want to insert another, for example, title and content slide, I could go up to new slide and I could select my title and content slide, which is perfectly fine. But I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. So I'm going to click on the undo on my quick access toolbar. And what I'm going to do this time is that I know that this slide here, slide three, is a title and content slide layout. And maybe the next slide is going to be reasonably similar to this one. What I could do if I wanted to is duplicate this slide. And the easiest way of doing that is just by pressing Control D on your keyboard. And it will essentially duplicate that slide and give you an exact copy for you to work on. So it's going to be exactly the same text. If you've got any images in there, those will be carried over as well. And it's also exactly the same slide layout. So I just wanted to mention that because that's personally something that I find myself doing all the time. I tend to duplicate if I'm going to be using the same slide layout. Another thing I wanted to quickly show you is now that I've inserted this duplicate copy, I actually don't really need this slide. So I'm going to delete it out of my presentation. And again, there's always a few different ways that you can do these things in Microsoft. I could right click on the slide. And in that menu, I have a delete slide option. You'll also see just above, I have duplicate slides. So I could select that instead of doing control D. Or alternatively, probably the easiest way is just to hit the delete key on your keyboard to get rid of that slide. Nice and simple and straightforward. So now let's look at saving this presentation. I'm going to go up to my file tab, which takes me into the backstage area. And immediately you'll see in this list, I have save and I have save as. So I'm going to select save as. And this takes me to my different save locations. And it really is entirely up to you where you save your presentation to. Now, what I have up here is you can see I have the option of saving into OneDrive. And if you're not familiar with OneDrive, that is Microsoft's cloud storage. So if you have an Office 365 account, you definitely have access to OneDrive cloud storage. And this tends to be where I save all of my files. I save them up into the cloud so that I can access them wherever I am, as long as I've got an internet connection. Alternatively, I've got a SharePoint site that I could save into, and I'm not going to go into that too much, but it is another place that I could save my file. And then underneath in this other locations area, I can select to save to this PC. So if you want to save it to a folder that you have on your PC, so maybe to the desktop or my documents or something like that, I could choose to add a place so a different network location if I wanted to. Or I can select browse. If I'm not too sure, it will allow me to browse around. So let me click on browse. And this should look fairly familiar to most of you. It pops up that file explorer and I can then decide on which location I want to save my file into. And I'm actually going to save into OneDrive. So I'm just going to navigate to the correct folder. And this looks good enough for me. I'm going to give my file a name. So I'm just going to call this my presentation. And you can see the save as type is defaulted to .pptx. And that is the default file extension for any file that you save into PowerPoint. Let's just have a quick look at what's in that drop down. So if I click on the arrow, you can see I have lots of different other file formats I could save in. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but some of these I might want to highlight would be if you're using a particularly old version of PowerPoint, you might want to save it as a 97 to 2003 presentation. Or if you're saving this as a template, so if you want to reuse it again, you might want to save it as a dot 
POTX file or a PowerPoint template. But I'm going to stick with the default, which is .pptx, and I'm going to click on Save. And what you'll see is that once you've saved your presentation, the name that you gave it will now appear in the top bar. So you can see at the top here it says my presentation dot pptx. I'm now fairly safe and fairly confident that I can work on this presentation. And as long as I save at regular intervals, then I know that I'm not going to lose my work if anything bad was to happen. So again, if you are working away and you want to quickly save to your file, you can just do the sh keyboard shortcut Control S to save, or alternatively, you can click on the save icon, which you'll have there on your quick access toolbar. That is one of the default icons that is added onto there. And you can see there it also does show you that keyboard shortcut Control S. So that wraps up saving a presentation. Very straightforward, very simple. What we're going to do next is an exercise. So let's jump over there now so I can talk you through that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. We've made it down to exercise 02 and I actually have a few instructions for you in order for you to complete this exercise. So what I want you to do for me is I want you to create a PowerPoint presentation from scratch. I want you to apply the theme called Berlin to your presentation. And I want you to add the title Sales Presentation and the subtitle 2018 Sales and Expenses. What I then want you to do is to add a second slide and that needs to be a two content layout slide. And what we're going to pretend is that once we've added that slide, it's going to be the wrong layout. So I want you to change the layout of that second slide from two contents to title and content layout. What I then want you to do on that slide is to add these three first level bullets. So one for sales, one for expenses, and then one for profits. I then want you to add this second level bullet underneath sales. So I want you to add something that says new southeastern region as a second level bullet. And then finally, I just want you to save that file to a location of your choice. So that might be on your desktop, it might be in OneDrive, wherever you want to save. And I want you to call it my presentation and we're saving it as just the default, the regular .pptx file. So a very straightforward exercise incorporating some of the techniques that we've learned in this section and building you up to be able to work on more advanced aspects of your presentation. That's it for now. I will see you in the next section. Hello again and welcome back to my course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to start to take a look at how you can format text and also bullet editing options. But in this specific module, we're going to stick to formatting text first of all. So I'm currently on slide one, which is our title slide where I have the words Wonderlust Travel, and we're going to make some edits to the text on this slide. Now, I want you to know that when I click on the title here, Wonderlust Travel, what you'll see is that I get a what we call a placeholder around the outside. And you'll see these placeholders all over the place in uh, PowerPoint. And in general, what they'll contain is some kind of object. So it could be text, it might be some kind of shape or a picture. And the beauty of the placeholder is that in order to change any formatting on this text, I don't actually have to highlight the text. We're probably used to doing that across other Microsoft applications. If I wanted to change the font here or the color or the size, I'm used to highlighting and then going and selecting my options. But you don't need to do that in PowerPoint. What you need to do is just click on that placeholder and you'll know you clicked on it because you get these resize handles around the outside. So these also help you resize that placeholder. So if I wanted to, I could drag this up or down and I could also drag it in or out. Now, you're probably noticing there as I'm doing that, it's not actually making any sizing changes to the text within the placeholder. It really just resizes that placeholder. 
So I'm going to make sure I've got my placeholder selected and let's go and explore the different options we have for formatting text. So I'm currently on my home ribbon and we're going to focus on this font group just here. Now the first one, the drop down just here, if I click it, again you're probably fairly used to using these across the other Microsoft applications, this is where you'll get a list of all of your fonts that are available to use in your presentation. So I can see at the top any theme fonts that I have applied and then I have all of my fonts listed in alphabetical order and as I scroll over them you can see I get a live preview which is really handy. It means that I can see what that's going to look like before I actually commit to applying it. So I might want to go down and apply, let's try this one, Bauhaus 93, like so and just switch up that font. Next to that we have our sizing, so again we have lots of different options in here, we can go all the way up to uh, 96, um, for this one I'm probably going to stick with around 72. It is also worth noting if you don't have exactly the size font that you want in that list, because if you look the numbers aren't all consecutive all the way up from 8 to 96, there are some gaps, so if I wanted for example font size 64, I don't actually have that listed here, but I can go up into the font box and just manually change that to 64 and hit enter and my font will resize. So just be aware that you can do that as well, make manual changes to that font size. I can then make smaller changes, incremental changes by increasing the font size. So if I click the increase font size button, it will jump that up or I can use the other one to move it down. So little incremental changes if I want to make some minor adjustments. The row underneath I have bold, again probably something you might be familiar with using, just makes that text a little bit bolder. I have my italics, I have underline, and I also have this one here, so text shadow. So that will add a shadow behind the selected text which makes it stand out from the background a little bit. And sometimes it's quite subtle, it is quite hard to see, but I've actually put a shadow on there, which actually looks quite nice, so I'm going to leave that, I think. What we could also do is use a strike through. Now, in this particular scenario, the strike through makes no sense whatsoever. I really don't want to put a strike through through my title, but you can probably think of scenarios, maybe things that you might want to cross out or show that there's been a change where a strike through might possibly be useful. We then have next to strike through the character spacing and we have a little drop down here and I'm currently set to normal but again you'll see if I hover over you'll see that that's very tight spacing, tight is a little bit wider, then we have normal, loose, very loose and then we have more spacing options in here as well. And that will take me to some advanced options for my character spacing so I can then set how many points in between my characters I want spaces for. So just remember that that is also there. The next option along is to change case. So we have sentence case, which is where you have the first letter capitalized, lowercase, uppercase, capitalize each word, and then toggle case. Now toggle case is useful when, and I'm sure you've had this scenario before, where you've typed something and you've accidentally had caps lock on, so everything comes out the opposite way of what you imagined. That's a good one to use in that particular instance. Next to that we have our text highlighter colour, so again if I wanted to I could select a highlight, so this is much like just having a highlighter pen and running it across. Again not particularly appropriate on this slide, but it, it could be useful to emphasize certain words or certain points or sentences on other slides. And then I have my font colors, so I could go through and change this to something completely different just by selecting from the palette if I wanted to. Now another little thing I want to highlight here is this little arrow in the bottom corner of the font group. If you click that, what it will do is it will give you access to some additional options when it comes to formatting your text. So some of these you've already seen on the ribbon, such as the font just here, and also things like font color, uh, font size, font style, again we've got regular italic, bold, bold italic if you want to use that. We can select an underline style, now that's quite interesting, we do have an underline button in that font group on the ribbon, but we only have one option for underline, if we were to select that from the ribbon, we just get a solid underline under our text. Whereas if we go into the additional options, 
we have lots of different styles of underline that we could use. If you wanted a dotted line or dashed or something like that, you can definitely find that in those advanced options. Again, underneath effects, we have some things which we found in our ribbon, such as the strike through, but we have additional things like double strike through, uh, superscript and subscript, small caps, all caps, and we can also equalize character height. Let me just show you that because that's one you may not have come across. If you look at my title, what will happen when I click this is that all the letters are kind of stretched to become the same height. So that might be something which you find quite useful. I'm going to undo that by clicking the undo button and just jump back in to my advanced options. And then I have that character spacing tab. Now we were in here a moment ago. It jumped us straight to it when we were looking at more options for character spacing. So again, you could select the type of spacing, so normal, expanded, condensed, and here you can actually customize how many points in between. So if you want the characters really spaced out, you could put quite a large number in here to get that effect. So don't forget that you have those additional options lurking in the background. Now, one other thing I want to show you with regards to formatting text is the Format Painter. This is such a useful utility. What it basically does is it allows you to take all of the properties that you've applied to a piece of text and essentially copy them and paste them or paint them over the top of another piece of text. So it's a really good efficiency tool. So what I mean by that is I'm currently clicked on the placeholder for Wanderlust Travel. And I've changed lots of properties about this text. So we changed the font that we were using. I changed the size. I changed the color of the font. And I also added a background shadow as well. Now, if I want the subtitle here, Unleash the Explorer Within, to be exactly the same as the title, I want to copy all those properties over. Now, of course, I could do it manually. I could select the subtitle and I could go through my different options. But the quickest way of doing it is just to use the Format Painter. So again, I'm going to highlight my placeholder because it's the properties of this text that I want to copy. I'm going to go up to my Home ribbon. And in that first group, I have Format Painter. And I'm going to click. Now, as soon as I click, you'll see that my cursor changes to a little paintbrush icon, which means I'm in Format Painter mode. And all I need to do is go down and click on the placeholder for that subheading. And you can see it applies exactly the same formatting to the subheading. Now, currently that doesn't look too great. I might want to go in and make it a bit smaller so it doesn't look like it's overlapping too much, but I could definitely do that. And that is so much quicker than copying the properties individually. It's also worth noting if I just undo out of there and get it back to how it was, with the Format Painter, it's a one-time deal. So when I click on my placeholder and I click Format Painter, as soon as I've painted that formatting, the Format Painter deactivates. So if I wanted to apply that same formatting to lots of pieces of text, I would have to keep going back to Format Painter in order to do it because it essentially deactivates after you've used it once. The way to stop it from doing that is to double click on Format Painter. So what I could do is I could highlight my placeholder, double click on Format Painter. I can then click on my text below, but you see that my Format Painter is still active. Look at my cursor. I still have the paintbrush icon. So I could then go and carry on painting that format on other pieces of text. To deactivate it, all you need to do is click the Format Painter option again, or you can press the Escape key on your keyboard. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you with regards to formatting text. In the next module, we're going to start to look at bullets and how we can format those. So I will see you over there. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to focus on working with bullets. And I'm back in the presentation that we've been working on so far in the course. And currently, I'm clicked on slide one, the title slide. Now, we don't have any bullets on here, so I'm going to jump straight across to slide two. And you can see what we have on this slide is a number of first level bullets. And if we jump across to slide three, 
you'll see we have some first and some second level bullets. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you can format these and also how you can customize them. So let's jump back to slide two. Now, just to reiterate some points that I've made previously about bullets, you can have five different levels of bullets. And remember, to get another bullet, all you need to do is click at the end and hit the Enter key, and that will give you another bullet on the same level. And if you want to indent that, so to give yourself a second level bullet, you just need to press the Tab key on your keyboard. If you want to go back or essentially outdent it, Shift Tab will outdent that for you. And again, if I wanted to delete it, I can just press my backspace key a couple of times to get me back to where I was. Now the bullets that you can see here, these little green triangles, the reason why I have green triangles is because these are the bullets which came along with the design template that I'm using. And if we want to, we can change those. So remember, most things, if you do select a design template, most things are customizable and you can change pretty much any element. So we're going to focus on changing these bullets. Another thing I can also change is not just the bullets, but I can also change the spacing between the text. Now I want to show you something first of all. Let me click inside this first line of text. And I want you to cast your eyes up to the ruler just above the slide. What you should be able to see is on the ruler, we have these little tabs or these little controls. We've got this first one just here, which is sort of like a, a little down facing arrow. And then we have a second one that's up facing. And then directly underneath, we have a kind of a block or a square. Now it's these two which are controlling the spacing of your bullets and also of your text on this slide. So for example, if I wanted to change the placement of this bullet, if I grab that first little tab, and you can see I get a line as I click and drag it in, it's going to drag that bullet in. And if I drag it out again, it's going to put it back to where it was. The same thing happens if I want more space between the bullet and the actual text. If I grab the up facing tab and drag that, and you should see that dotted line again, that's going to move the placement of that text further away from that bullet. And again, I can drag it back to put it back to where it was. Now you'll notice when I'm doing that, it's only moving the first bullet or the first piece of text. It's not actually moving the rest of the text. And why is that? Well, it's because I'm clicked in that first line of text. So if I wanted to move the entire lot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of my points and then I can drag that top tab and you'll see it moves all of those bullet points. And I could do the same if I wanted to drag that text over a little bit as well. So just a point to bear in mind, when you are moving these around or adding extra space in. So now let's talk about the actual bullets themselves. If we jump up to the home ribbon and in the paragraphs group, you can see I have this little bullets option just here. So I'm going to click that drop down arrow and you can see I have a number of different options in here. So I could change the style of the bullets that I have. And you'll see as I hover over, I again get that live preview. So if I wanted something a little bit different, I could choose any one of these in the list. I also have the option of none if I wanted to remove those bullets altogether. But what if I wanted to do something completely different? Maybe I didn't want to use any of these options that we have in this drop down menu. Well, I do have more options for this. Let me jump down into bullets and numbering and that will open the little bullets and numbering dialog box. And again, I have a few options in here. So these are the ones that I was just looking at. I can change the size of the bullet. Now, when it comes to sizing, what you need to remember here is that 100% or 100 in this box means that the bullet is going to be exactly the same size as the text. So you can adjust accordingly. And I can also change the color of my bullets. So if I wanted to make them, let's make them orange and click on OK. I now have orange bullet points. Let's jump back into that bullets and numbering again. 
Now, again, if I didn't want any of these particular styles of bullet, I have two additional options that I can choose from. So I could choose to use a picture that I've got saved off to my PC as a bullet, or I could customize the current bullets. Let's jump into customize first of all. And this will open up the symbols box. And this gives me access to all of the symbols and I can use any of these as a bullet. Now, when you click the drop down here, you see you have lots and lots of different font types and each one of these contains slightly different characters or symbols that you can use. And sometimes it is quite hard to kind of find the particular one that you're looking for. Now I'm going to scroll down to wingdings. There's normally some good ones in there. And you can see I have lots and lots of different options. So I'm going to choose a plane as this is all about travel and I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to change the color of these. I'm going to make them stand out a little bit more. Let's make it a slightly brighter color orange and click on OK. And I now have those plain bullet points. So that looks quite nice actually for this presentation. So I do have another choice. I can choose to use a picture that I've got saved off on my PC. So let's jump back into bullets and numbering. And this time I'm going to select picture. And I have the option of choosing from a file. I can browse the web for a picture or, and this is new for 2019, I can choose an icon. And the icon sets, we haven't covered them yet in this course, but they are really good and they're particularly good to use as bullet points. So in this case, I'm going to select from icons. And what it will do is it will load all of the icons that are available within PowerPoint. And if you've never used these before, these are completely customizable icons, which can be resized, recolored, all of that good stuff. And they're organized into different categories. So if I scroll down, I can't remember if there is a travel one. I can't see one. So let's just scroll through and have a look at something that might be appropriate for our use. So you can see here we've got arrows, lots and lots of different things. So here we go in the location section, I might want to choose uh, the globe. So I'm going to select this and select insert. And you can see now I have my icons. Now, I don't particularly like the way that they look, so I might want to customize them. So again, up to bullets and numbering. And I'm going to say I want these 100% of the text. And I'm going to click on OK. And that makes those a little bit bigger. And just to show you another way that you can add a bullet, this time I'm going to use a picture that I've got saved off to my PC. So you've probably guessed it, up to bullets and numbering. And this time I'm going to select picture. And I'm going to say from a file. Now I'm just going to select a random picture. So I'm going to choose this one down here because that looks like it might possibly be related to travel. And I'm going to select insert. And there we go. Now I'm not saying that's the best way of uh, using a bullet. You might be able to find some pictures which look a little bit better, but just to show you the technique and how you can use icons and pictures as bullets if you want to. Now I'm going to jump across to slide three because in this slide we have two levels of bullets. And in this case, both of these levels are the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the placeholder again. And what if I wanted to use numbers as opposed to bullets? Well, again, if we jump up to our paragraph group next to our bullets, we have numbered lists or numbering. So if I click the drop down, there's all these different styles of numbering that I could choose. So I'm going to select, uh, let's say this one just here. And you can see now that that's how it's organized it. So if I was clicking on the end of balance and if I hit enter, you'll see it gives me a B. OK, so it follows through and let's go back into numbering and go into bullets and numbering. And again, these are my advanced options. So again, I have the same options. I can choose to change the size. I can choose to change the color. I can even choose to start a different number if I wanted to. So it's entirely up to you how you customize these. But just be aware you have the bullets and you also have the numbering available as well. 
Now I'm going to put that back to, uh, let's say one, two, three, and click on OK. And there we go. So that about wraps it up on bullets and numbering. Now in the next section, I have an exercise that I want you to do just to make sure that you are OK with everything that we've covered so far in relation to formatting bullets and numbers. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. It's now time for exercise three. We've made it all the way through. And the idea of this exercise is really just to practice the skills that you've learned over the course of this section. So what I want you to do, I have some instructions up here, is I want you to open the file called Practice Presentation 4. And what I want you to do within this presentation is to change the bullets on slide 2 to the numbers 1, 2 and 3. I then want you to jump across to slide 3 and change the bullets to second level bullets. And I've listed out there what I want you to change them to. So I want you to change them to recently renovated, designed to cultivate your dining experience and no car needed. I then want you to change those bullets to whichever picture you like. So you can grab an icon, you can maybe use um, an image that you have saved off to your PC, or you can browse online for an image that you'd like to use. So entirely up to you. Once you've done that, I want you to save, and then I want you to close the file. And that's pretty much it, a very straightforward exercise. So see how you get on with that, and I will see you in the next section. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to be focusing on adding graphics and some more visual elements into our slides. And specifically in this module, we're going to be looking at working with shapes. Now to do this, I'm going to want to have a new blank slide. So I'm currently clicked on slide three and I'm going to jump up to my home ribbon. I'm going to go to new slide. And this time I'm just going to select a blank to add one of those in. So you can see here, there's absolutely nothing on here. There's no placeholders, there's no text, there's nothing. But what I do have is that design template. So I still have the blue background with that green rectangle tab at the top. Now, sometimes when you're working with these templates, particularly if you're adding graphics in, if you start to add too many graphics, it might clash a little bit or overlap with the design template. Now, the one I'm using here is fairly basic. We don't really have too much on it other than this green rectangle in the corner. But just be aware of that. If you do have a rather busy looking background and then you start to add more graphics and shapes on, it can tend to look a little bit chaotic. Now I'm going to show you a little trick which will enable you to essentially remove or hide all of the background images on either the side that you're currently using or across the entire template. So I'm going to go up to the design ribbon. And you'll see all the way across on the right hand side, we have an option that says format background. And this will just allow you to fine tune that formatting of your background. Now in this first group here where it says fill, I currently have picture or texture fill selected, but what I do have is an option to hide background graphics. And you'll see as soon as I click that, that green rectangle has disappeared, just leaving me with that very plain blue background, which is essentially what I want for this exercise. Now it's only going to remove it from one slide. If I did, however, want to remove it from all of my slides, all I would need to do is click the apply to all button at the bottom. If I don't click that, and I'm not going to do that, if I just close down this pane, then it will just remove it from the slide that I'm currently on. So that's a nice little trick. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to play around with some shapes. I'm going to insert some onto this blank slide so you really just get a feel of how you can use them. Now you can access shapes from a few different tabs and you'll see as we go through, I think it's sort of three or four tabs that you have access to shapes on. So if we jump across to the home ribbon, 
you'll see in this drawing group, we have this little drop down here, which has all of the shapes that I have access to. And they are organized into different categories or groups. And the first group up there is my recently used shapes. So you normally find the ones that you use most often will be listed up here. We then have a selection of lines, some rectangles, some basic shapes, that's where you'll find things like triangles, circles, squares, all things like that, the smiley face, some people love to add that one into their presentations. We then have block arrows, uh, equation shapes, if you're doing some kind of math on your slide. We have flowchart icons, which can be very useful, stars and banners, call outs, and then finally we have action buttons. Now, we're not going to cover action buttons in this module. We're going to do that later on in the course because these are a little bit more functional than some of the other shapes. So essentially what these action buttons are are hyperlinks. So you can, for example, add an action button so that when it's clicked on, it will maybe open an Excel spreadsheet or maybe jump to a different slide, something like that. So they're shapes that have a bit more to them that allow you to perform an action. And as I said, we're going to come back to that a little bit later on. So let's just draw a basic shape. I'm going to go up to my lines group and I'm just going to select this first one here, the basic line. And you'll see now my cursor changes to a crosshair. And what I can do is literally just click and if I drag, and I can drag it up or down, I get a very basic line. Now, because this is an object, you'll see when I let go, I do get those control handles at the end, which will allow me to resize that line or move it around and just make some minor adjustments if I want to. What you'll also see is because it is an object, now I'm clicked on it, I get my shape format contextual ribbon appear. Remember, in any of the Microsoft applications, every time you're clicked on an object, you will get a contextual menu appear, and that will contain all of the formatting options which are related to the particular object that you're clicked on. So I can see in here, I can go in and change the shape style, the shape outline, I can add effects, so on and so forth. So just be aware of that additional ribbon that appears. Now, as I mentioned before, there are a few different ribbons where you can access shapes, and this is another one of them. So this is the Shape Format Contextual Ribbon, and the first group is the Insert Shapes group. So if I wanted to add another shape, I could click my drop down, and I have access to my Shapes library again. I'm going to go back to these lines, and I'm just going to add this one here. So I'm going to do a squiggly line which is this one on the end. And you'll see here it says free form. So if I click it and then I get a pencil tool this time or a pencil cursor, and that just allows me to really kind of free draw whatever I want. And obviously this doesn't look particularly great and you do have to be quite careful with it. This is a lot easier, I would say, if you're using a tablet, which has a, a pen, it's a lot more accurate. I'm using a mouse and it's a little bit hard to get the accuracy level when you're doing freehand drawing, but hopefully you get the idea. You can see again, once I let go of my mouse, I have those control handles so I can then use those to resize my squiggle and I can always pick it up and move it around. And you can see I can drop objects on top of objects. And we're going to discuss this a bit later on in the course, and that is positioning objects, moving them, aligning them, so on and so forth. But you can place them on top of each other. Now, I actually don't want this squiggle, so while I've got it selected, I'm just going to press the delete key on my keyboard just to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to show you yet another ribbon where you can access your shapes, and that is on the insert ribbon. And you'll see in the illustrations group, we have a shapes drop down. And again, we get that same shapes library. I'm going to pick something slightly different this time. So I'm going to do a rectangle. So let's just click this first one. I get a crosshair and I can drag and draw a rectangle on the screen. And again, I get those control handles. I can move it around. I can change the color. I can do whatever I like with this particular shape. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the shapes, but let's just add a couple more. Um, let's go down to our basic shapes. And for this one, I'm going to draw a smiley face. I'm just going to draw that underneath here. Now, one thing I will point out, you can see it's kind of like quite free and easy how you can size that. It's not a constrained sizing when you're dragging and dropping. So if I wanted to make sure that this smiley face was completely circular, 
what I could do is as I'm dragging, if I hold down my shift key and drag the corner, it will resize it proportionally. So it will essentially constrain the limit. So that's quite nice if you want to make sure you're getting an exact circle on your shape. And what you'll also see when you add some of the shapes is that they'll have a control handle inside the shape. So with this smiley face, you can see that on the smile, we have another control handle. And this is pretty cool. What this means is that I can manipulate just the smile. So if I drag this control handle up, I can turn him into a frowny man instead of a smiley man. So look out for those control handles within the shapes as well. And just to make this all match, I'm going to change the color of my sad face man. Let's go back to our shapes drop down and just do a couple more. I could use the block arrows. Again, these are particularly useful if you're doing some kind of chart. And remember to constrain, hold down the shift key, and I can draw my arrow like so. And again, just going to change the color by clicking back up to my shapes. And I want to show you something quite interesting. We're going to go down to stars and banners, and I'm going to pick this 16 point star. And again, I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm just going to draw this star. Now, again, remember what I said, this particular shape has that control handle within it. So if I grab this little red control and just drag it down, you can see I can change the way that that shape looks simply by dragging out or dragging in. So that's another point to remember. And the final one I'm going to show you is just the call out. So let's select one of these call outs. Let's do this one. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to drag. I'm just going to change the color of that one. And again, this is another one of those shapes that has an additional control handle. So that means that I can change the direction of this call out depending on where my other objects are. So if the sad man was saying something, I could really direct it in that direction. And then I could add some text into this shape. I can do that in a couple of ways. I can just start typing. Alternatively, if I right click my mouse, you'll see I have an edit text option. And I can type something in here. Uh, I'm so sad. And again, I could change the font. I could modify the size if I wanted to just by highlighting, going to my home ribbon, and I'm going to make that text a little bit bigger, like so. Now, another one that's worth pointing out before I forget is if we go back to insert and go to shapes, underneath basic shapes, the first one there is a text box. So let's click that. And I'm just going to click somewhere on the screen and you can see it automatically adds a little text box. So I can just start typing any text that I want to add. So um, I'm going to say this is how to add a text box. And if I click off, you can see it just looks like regular text that I've added. And if I click on again, I can drag and drop that and position it how I want. If I did want to add some kind of background to that, just to make it stand out a little bit, remember when you're clicked on an object, you have that shape format contextual ribbon. And I could choose to fill my background if I wanted to. So I'm going to select just a gray background like so. And then I can drag and drop. So that's the basics of adding shapes into your PowerPoint presentation. They really can add a nice visual element. And they're also particularly useful when you're doing things like diagrams or process flows or anything along those lines. So really just have a play around with them, resize them, move them about, change the color, use the different options on that shape format contextual ribbon and see how you get along with that. So that's it for this section. In the next section, we're going to look at how you can add different kinds of graphics into your PowerPoint presentation. So please join me for that. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to take a look at inserting graphics into our slides. And the reason why you might want to do this is because slides can tend to get a little bit boring if you just have bullet points and text on them. So you might want to add 
something which makes them a little bit more visual, a little bit more interesting for your audience to look at. And we've already seen how we can add some shapes to give it a little bit more pizzazz, but we're going to take that up a notch now and we're going to start adding in some graphics. Now I'm working on slide three and I've got quite a lot of text on here and I want to add an image on the right hand side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to resize this placeholder very slightly and just move it over a little bit to give myself some room in order to place an image. So I'm now going to jump up to my insert ribbon and you'll see that I have an images group just here and I'm going to select online pictures. Now you can see here automatically we have lots of really high quality images that we can add and they are organized again into different categories. So you could choose to go into a category. So if I click on uh, airplane, for example, and you can see I get lots of nice images of airplanes. I'm just going to click the arrow to go back. Because what I can also do is if I'm searching for something very specific is I can use the search bar at the top here and you can see that it says search Bing. So that's essentially what you're doing when you're adding an online picture is that you're essentially doing a search as if you were in a Bing browser. So I might want to click in the search here and I might want to type in travel and hit my enter key. And one important thing to note is you can see at the top here, I have a little checkbox that says Creative Commons only. So essentially I have a filter applied to my search results, which is only showing me images which have a Creative Commons license. Now the way that Creative Commons license works is that if, for example, somebody decides to upload a picture or maybe a video to the internet, automatically that person owns that picture or that video. So you can't just jump on there, grab that picture and use it. However, when they upload, they do have the ability to give that image or that video a Creative Commons license, which means that you do have permission to take those pictures or those videos and use them in your presentation. So essentially what I've got here is I'm only filtering for images that have a Creative Commons license, which means that I'm okay to use them. So now I have my list, I could scroll through and I could select one of these if I wanted to. So I'm just going to select this travel, uh, this luggage or suitcase and select insert. And there we go. Now I'm going to drag that over. It's a little bit big, so I'm just going to resize it like so and put that into my presentation. So that's one way that I can insert a graphic onto my slide. I can go up to insert, I can search online and I can add it in. Let's jump back to slide two because I want to show you a slightly different way of utilizing this. So this might be if you want to add an animated image into your presentation. So again, I'm going to go up to the insert ribbon. I'm going to go down to online pictures. But this time in the search bar, I'm going to type in animated GIF travel and hit enter. Now, when it comes to animated GIFs, you can see here, none of these look like they're animated particularly. And the thing with this is that you don't tend to see the animation until you've added it onto your slide and then you've run the slideshow. So just to show you an example, I'm going to just click on this one and select insert. And this one's quite small. I'm just going to drag him over here and you can see here it's got the license underneath. Now that is just a text box. So if I don't want it there, because I know that I can use this picture, I can just highlight the text box and delete it. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to put him down in the corner. Now you'll see that this won't show as animated until I run this slideshow. So I'm going to click my slideshow button, which if you remember is right down in that bottom right hand corner. And you can see, there you go, he's slightly swaying from side to side. Now that's not the best image, it is a little bit pixelated, but the, hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can search for those animated GIFs in order to add them into your presentation. I'm going to press escape to come out of my slideshow. Now both of these images that I've added into these slides are kind of in the, the clip art variety, shall we say. Now one thing I will say, when you are selecting images for your presentation, again, be very aware of the audience that is going to see this presentation. 
I would say that clip art a lot of the time is not particularly good to add to slides which are going to be used in a business context. It doesn't really have that much of a professional feel. So you might want to add a more professional, high quality picture as opposed to clip art. So now we've talked about adding those basic graphics into our presentation. We're going to move on and talk about adding pictures into our slides. So that's what we're going to cover in the next section. I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. So far in this section, we've looked at how you can add shapes and also how you can add pictures and animated GIFs into your slides. In this module, we're going to take a look at how you can add in icons and 3D models. And both of these are fairly new items that have been added into PowerPoint. So I'm currently clicked on slide two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out this image that I have just here by clicking on it and pressing the delete key on my keyboard. Now, what we're going to replace it with is an icon and you'll find icons on the insert ribbon in the illustrations group. So you can see here we have this icons button just there. As I said, these are fairly new. And you should have them if you have PowerPoint 2019, then you definitely will have these on your ribbon. And I actually really love these. I think they're really, really nice. So let's click on icons and take a look at the library. Now we saw this briefly earlier when we were dealing with bullet points, but just to recap, these are all the icons that you have access to. And again, as with everything, they are organized by category in alphabetical order. So it really depends what kind of icon you're looking for. So I can just scroll through and it's worth noting that all of these icons are completely customizable. So whilst they're showing in this library as being black, you can change the color, you can resize them, which makes them really nice and versatile. So I'm going to scroll down and look for something that's related to travel. And if I stick with the same one that I use for the bullet points, which was the uh, icon of the world, which I think is towards the bottom. Yep, there it is. I'm going to use this one by selecting it and clicking on insert. And there we go. I have my icon. So I'm going to put this down in the corner and I find with icons, they're actually quite nice to add to master slides. So they're quite a nice thing to have in the bottom corner of every slide, but that's just how I like to use them. It is entirely up to you. So I'm just going to put this down in the bottom corner. And again, when I'm clicked on it, because it's an object, if you look up on your ribbons, you'll see that you now have that graphics format contextual ribbon. So this means I can edit any element of this particular icon. So I don't think it looks particularly good in black. So I'm going to change the fill by selecting another color from the palette. So I'm going to go with, in fact, let's use something that we used previously. And that is my favorite eyedropper utility because I'm going to make this the same green as we have up here. And there we go. So very simple. And I can just use those handles to drag to resize. And as I said, you have all of these other options in order to format that particular icon. So icons are a really nice thing to utilize on your slides to add a bit of pizzazz and a bit of interest. So now let's have a look at adding 3D models. And again, these are new and they're particularly cool. So let's jump across to slide three. And again, I'm just going to delete out this image that I currently have in there by pressing my delete key. I'm going to go up to the insert ribbon. And in that illustrations group, I have an option for 3D models. So I can select from a file or from online sources. Now, in this case, I'm going to select from online sources because I don't have a 3D image saved off onto my PC. Now, this should look fairly familiar. Again, it's bringing up the 3D model library so I can scroll through the different categories or if I'm looking for something very specific, I can search for it in the top here. So let me just scroll down and see if there is a travel section. And yes, there is a traveler section just here. So let's click on traveler. And I have now all of my images and you can see immediately that these are a lot higher quality vector images and you'll see how cool they are when I add them in. 
So let's select this Passport 3D model and select Insert. And sometimes you'll find with these 3D models, um, they are quite large file sizes, so they do take a few seconds to load. I've got my passport there. I'm just going to resize that slightly, make it a little bit smaller and add that in. Now the image is really nice, but the cool thing about 3D models is that you can rotate them. So if you look in the middle of this model, I have this little round uh, control handle. And if I click and drag, it allows me to rotate that all the way round because it is 3D. So I think that's pretty cool and you can really get some nice effects by doing that. So I'm just going to rotate it so it's kind of like that. And again, if I'm clicked on it, you can see I get the 3D model contextual ribbon, which allows me to do things like select the model view so I can choose any of these. So maybe I want to change it to above front right. I can add alt text. I can change my 3D model. I can do whatever I like with it. So those are really nice. I would say don't go crazy adding 3D models into your presentation. As I said, they are quite hefty on space. So you might find if you do have like loads of them in your presentation, the presentation does start to slow down and lag a little bit. So those are another couple of different types of image that you can add into your presentation to really give it that wow factor. So have a little play around with those, investigate and see what you think. So that's about it for this module. In the next module, we're going to be taking a look at inserting pictures. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section we're going to continue on adding images into our presentation and in this module we're going to focus on adding pictures. So uh, images which are more like a photograph as opposed to the ones that we've added before. So already we've added into our presentation shapes We've added in some sort of clip art style graphics and animated clip art. We've added in icons and we've also added in 3D models. So I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques and things you can do with photos and putting those into your presentation. So I'm going to jump across to slide two. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to change the slide layout. So currently this is a title and content slide. And I'm going to change it just by clicking this layout drop down. And you can see there it's telling me which one is currently in use. It's highlighted in gray. And I'm going to change it to a two content layout. And you can see automatically what it's done. It's put my text content on the left hand side. And it's given me an additional box here or an additional placeholder, which will allow me to add another piece of content. And these icons we've seen before. The one that we're going to use is this one just here, the one that says pictures. So that's not to be confused with the one next to it, which is online pictures. I'm going to choose a picture from my desktop, so I'm going to select pictures. Now I've got a couple of images here, which I might like to use. And I think I'm going to just select this one and click on insert. And as you can see, the picture is inserted the same size as that placeholder. And of course, I do have the freedom to move that around and I can make it a little bit bigger if I want to. So I think that one actually looks quite nice. Now, there's something really important I want to mention here. When you do insert a picture, it's essentially sitting on top of your slide. If you have a presentation that has a lot of pictures in it and you're inserting them in this way where they're sitting on top of the slide, you'll find that the file size of your overall presentation starts to get very, very large. So I'm going to show you a way that you can combat this. I'm going to jump across to slide four and we're going to insert a blank slide. So let's jump up to new slide and go down to blank. And you might be thinking, well, I don't have a layout or a placeholder here and I don't have an icon to click on to insert the image. So how do I do that? Well, very simply, we go up to the insert ribbon and in the images group, we have a pictures option. And that's going to take me back to my same folder that I was in previously. 
And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this image of an aeroplane above the clouds, very nice image, and click on Insert. And that's inserted and it's quite a nice image. It doesn't quite take up that whole slide. I can still see a bit of blue lurking in the background. And I guess I could pick it up, I could drag it and move it, and I could use the resize handles. Now the problem with stretching some images is it can distort them, it can sort of like flatten them very slightly. This one's not too bad, but that is just something to watch out for if you are doing this. Now I might want this image to take up the entire screen or the entire slide like it is right now. But as I said, if I had a lot of images like this, and I am someone who does like to use very large images in my PowerPoint presentations, I think they look really effective. But there is a way that you can keep your file size down and still have these larger images in your presentation. So I'm going to show you how to do it in a slightly different way. I'm going to delete this image out, so I'm clicked on it, press delete. I'm going to go up to the design ribbon. And again, I'm going to go all the way across to the right hand side and select Format Background. Now I have quite a few different options here with underneath Fill. So I have Solid Fill where I could choose a different color if I wanted to. Gradient Fill allows me to have um, a gradient background and I can make various different adjustments to that. Picture or Texture Fill. Now, what you get in here as the default is very much determined by the theme that you used or the design that you used. But the one that I'm actually interested in, I'm going to stay clicked on picture or texture fill because I do want to fill the background with a picture. But I'm going to say insert picture from file. And I'm going to select that same image and click insert. And you can see now that that image is still taking up the whole slide. But instead of sitting on top of the slide, it's made it into a background. And that means it keeps your file size really, really low. So that's a much better way of utilizing a large image as a background and keeping your file size down. Now you can see that I still have that green sort of rectangle poking through. I actually don't think that looks too bad in this case. But remember, if you want to, you can hide background pictures. And finally, I'm just going to jump back up to slide one, the title slide, and I'm going to close down that pane. And I'm going to insert another picture, so up to insert and down to pictures. And I'm going to choose this one just here and click on insert. And this is a bit too large. I might want to have this just at the top. So I'm going to resize that just by dragging the corner in. And I'm going to put it at the top in the middle there. And remember, you can move any of your placeholders around. So maybe I want my title to be in the middle and my subtitle to be underneath. You can, really can just position these however you like. And this will change as we go through the presentation. But I think for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. So you've seen a few different techniques of inserting photographs into your presentation. All that's left to do now is to do exercise four, which we're going to do in the next section. So I will see you then. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. We've made it to exercise four. And in this exercise, we're going to practice some of the techniques that we've learnt in the preceding section. Now, as always, I have some instructions on the screen for you to follow. So what I first want you to do is open up the file called Practice Presentation 5. And then on slide two in that file, I want you to change the layout to two columns and add a clip art picture using the online pictures option. I then want you to jump across to slide three and just add a regular picture. So not a clip art picture necessarily, but just a picture using the online pictures option. I then want you to go to the end of the presentation and add a new slide and then make a picture that you have saved to your computer as the background for the slide. Finally, I just want you to save and close the file down. So again, very simple instructions. Give it a go and I will see you in the next section.
Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this module we're going to talk about selecting objects and we've discussed objects in some of the previous modules. So objects can be a number of different things. So they might be shapes as we have on the slide right now. They might be text, they might be graphics. And it's important that you know how you can select one or multiple objects on the slide. It's going to help you increase your efficiency dramatically. So let's talk about just some single object selections. So I'm currently clicked on slide four. And if you remember, this was the slide where we added in all those different shapes and we weren't too careful when we added them. We just kind of put them on the slide. So if I want to select any of these shape objects, it's a very simple case of just clicking on the object and you'll see then I get that placeholder around the outside with those control handles and I can make any formatting changes I need to to that particular shape. But what if I want to select multiple shapes? So maybe I want to change this star and also this arrow. Maybe I want to change the color of both of them at the same time. So you can select multiple objects by holding down your control key and clicking on that second object. And you'll now see that I have both of those selected. And I could continue with that. So if I wanted to select the rectangle as well, hold down control again and click to select that object. And I can then go in and I can make any changes I need to to those particular objects. To deselect everything, just click away onto a blank part of the slide and those objects will become deselected. Now, another way that you can select objects is by drawing what we call a net around those objects. So, for example, if I just click anywhere on this blank slide and I just drag my mouse to include some of these objects, so I'm just going to include these ones just here. When I let go, you'll see that everything that's contained within that net is going to be selected. Now, you can see that I kind of have part of, a very small part of that rectangle is covered by the net, but because the entire object isn't covered, then the rectangle won't be selected. So I'm just hoping that the arrow, the star, the call out, and also that text box are going to be selected when I let go. So let me let go of my mouse. And there we go. I have all of those objects selected again. So very simple to make multiple selections and click off to deselect. The final thing I want to show you is sometimes you might want to select all objects on a slide. And a good example of this would be if you'd maybe done quite a complex um, organizational chart and you've got lots of different shapes and pictures. If you wanted to move it all as one object as opposed to moving the individual elements, you might want to select all objects on the slide. And the easiest way to do that is by using a shortcut key, Control A and that will highlight or select all of the objects on the slide and you can then drag them as one and reposition them. So those are just a few techniques when it comes to selecting objects and we will be using those as we go throughout the course. In the next module we're going to talk about how to edit objects so please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this module, we're going to start to talk a little bit about editing objects. So previously we've seen how we can select objects, but now we're going to look at the different ways that we can edit them. And when we're talking about editing, what we mean is doing things like changing the size, rotating the object, copying it, deleting it, so on and so forth. So let's start with deleting objects first of all. Now I have quite a few shapes on my slide here and I'm just gonna make it a little bit less chaotic and delete out a few of these. So I'm going to first of all delete out this call out. So all I need to do is click on the call out to select it and the easiest way is to press the delete key on my keyboard. And I'm also going to delete out this text box. So I'm going to click on it to select it and press the delete key. And that's gone as well. And finally, I'm just going to delete the little sad face man because he is a little bit depressing. So again, click and press the delete key. So now I have just three objects left on my slide, which is a little bit easier to work with. So first of all, it's worth noting if you want to move an object, it's a very simple case of clicking and just dragging those objects around like so. 
so very nice and easy. And when you are clicked on an object, one thing you might have noticed is that aside from these control handles, which control the size, so if I was to drag in this one in the corner, it drags it in diagonally. Alternatively, if I wanted to decrease the height of the object, I can do that, and the same on the bottom. We also have a rotation handle at the top here. So you'll see as I hover over that little circular arrow, I get my cursor changes again to something similar, a little black circular arrow. And this will allow me to rotate that object. So I can just click my mouse and drag it round in order to rotate that particular object. So again, very simple, nice and easy. Remember that if you do have multiple objects selected, so let's select this arrow as well by holding down the control key and clicking. If you then use your rotation handle, you're going to rotate both of those objects at the same time. So again, that's worth bearing in mind. So let's talk now about copying objects. Now, most of the time when it comes to copying, people are very used to right clicking, selecting copy, or using the shortcut key Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And that's perfectly fine. If I wanted to copy this rectangle, I could do Control C. I could click somewhere else on my slide and do Control V to paste a copy of that. That's perfectly fine. But a better way of doing it, or an easier way, is to just duplicate that object. So again, if I click on this object and do Control D, that's going to give me an exact duplicate. So that's something I use all the time as opposed to Control C, Control V. It's just less uh, keyboard shortcuts to use, so it's a little bit more efficient. Another cool thing is if we select this star and I'm going to do Control D, I'm going to duplicate this object multiple times. So I'm just going to carry on pressing Control D so I get lots of stars just there. Now this goes back to selecting. I might want to do something with these stars. I might want to maybe move them all in one block and it's going to be very difficult for me to go in and hold down my control key and select every single one of those stars because there's so many of them and they overlap. So again, this is where we use our net to select. If you remember from the previous module, if we just click and drag round all of those stars and let go, it's going to select the whole lot and I can then pick them up, move them by dragging and dropping to wherever I want to place them. So just bear that in mind as we're going to be using some of these techniques as we go through the rest of the course. So that's a little bit about editing. We're now going to move on and talk about formatting those objects. So I will see you in the next module. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this module, we're going to talk about formatting objects. And when we say formatting, all we mean is just taking the properties of an object and changing them. So for example, the color or maybe the shadow effect or the outline style. Now, there are two parts to this section, so make sure that you do watch both parts. There's formatting part one and formatting part two. And you'll see that there are a lot of different options when it comes to formatting your objects, and it can get a little bit overwhelming, but we're gonna try and step through these at a reasonably slow pace. Now, I'm currently clicked on slide four, and I've already taken the liberty of deleting off of this slide all of the objects that we had on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw some new objects. So I'm gonna go up to insert, I'm gonna to go to shapes, and I'm just going to select one of these rectangles. So I'm just going to drag that like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this three times. So I have three of them on here. And we've seen a couple of different techniques. We could do Control C, Control V to copy paste. Alternatively, we could do Control D to duplicate that object. But another way that I didn't show you was you can use your uh, keyboard and mouse control. So if you hold down the control key and click on the object and drag it, you'll see that I get an exact duplicate. And I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to hold down control, click, drag, and let go. 
And you can see that my objects aren't particularly aligned at this time, which is absolutely fine. We're going to sort that out in a moment. I'm going to add some more objects. I'm going to grab a block arrow. Now I'm currently on the shape format tab and I can access my shapes from here as well. So let me click the drop down. And I'm just going to add this block arrow and I'm just going to draw a little block arrow in between these. And again, I'm going to duplicate this so I have two of them. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to drag and drop like so. And I'm going to add more shapes. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go to shapes and this time I'm going to add a sun. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to drag like so. And finally, I'm just going to add a call out. So let's do this little bubble call out just here. So we have quite a few objects on our slide right now. Now, as I mentioned previously, you can add text inside any of these objects and you just click on the object and start typing. So in this first one, I'm going to say uh, welcome. In the second one, it's going to be about. And the third one is going to say benefits. And remember, if I want to change the size or resize any of these objects, if I'm clicked on one of them, I can just use those control handles to drag in and drag out. But if I want to make sure that they were all resized in exactly the same way, again, if I select all of them, so if I hold down my control key and select all three of them, you'll see that when I drag out to resize one of them, it also resizes the others as well. So that just ensures that you keep your sizing consistent across all of the objects that you have selected. So that's a, a cool little trick. So what else can I do with regards to formatting? Well, I can change the font color. So remember, if you're clicked on the placeholder, you don't necessarily have to highlight the text. I can go to the home ribbon and I can choose to change the font color. So I'm just going to make that a light gray color. Another thing you might want to do is that if you have a shape, for example, this one here, which is kind of a rectangle with the corner cut off, you might decide at a later stage that you want to actually change the shape. And you can do that if you click on the object or the shape, go up to the shape format contextual ribbon and go to edit shape you then have an option that says change shape. And as I hover over, it pops out that very familiar list of shapes. So maybe I just want to change this into a rectangle. And you can see, there we go, we now have a rectangle. It's a very small change, it just doesn't have that corner cut off. So very simple to change the shape after the fact. Now I'm gonna come out of there, I'm gonna undo that just by clicking on my undo button. You can also press Control Z. And what I want to talk about now is the shape styles just here on the shape format ribbon. So these are somewhat predetermined by the theme that you've chosen. And you can see that they have, some of them have solid background fills, some of them have more gradients, some of them have outlines, and then we have some presets listed at the bottom as well. So if you just want a really quick way of applying some formatting and you quite like the look of these, you can just click to apply that style. So that's a really quick way of applying formatting. Now it might be that when you're looking in this shape styles gallery, that you don't particularly like any of the colors in there or they're not suitable for the presentation that you're doing. So this is where you can go in and refine by using these buttons to the right. So shape fill, shape outline and shape effects. So let's take this second one, let's highlight it. If I want to change the fill, and when we say fill, we're talking about the background color of the shape, and I can see it's currently set to this lime green color. I can click shape fill, and again, I get a palette of all of the colors that come with this theme. I then have a palette of standard colors that are in PowerPoint, and I can choose any of those if I want to. So if I wanted to, I could make this orange. Let's click Shape Fill again. Now again, if I don't want to be limited to the theme colors and the standard colors, you really can customize this at a very granular level. So I could go down to More Fill Colors. And this will pop up, this little palette, and I have two tabs, Standard and Custom. 
So if we click on standard, you'll see I have a whole host of colors that I can choose from. So I could select any of these if I wanted to. So I could do a nice purple and select OK, and the shape will be filled in that color. But what if I want to get even more granular and customize this color? Let's jump back into Shape Fill, go down to More Fill Colors, and this time we're going to go across to Custom. And this is where you can drag over the palette and really kind of choose the color that you want. Most of the time, you probably have the kind of color in your mind that you want to use. So maybe I want a, uh, let's say, a yellow kind of color. In fact, let's make it a bit darker because our text is white. Uh, let's do, let's do a yellow, but then I can use this to adjust the shade of that yellow. So if I want to make it darker, I can drag it down or lighter, I can drag it up. So I'm just going to make it, it's not a particularly nice color. Let's choose something a bit better, a dark purple and click on OK. And there we go. So you can really get into customizing the types of colors that you use for your shape fill. Now, the one below, Shape Outline, if I just click away, sometimes this is quite hard to see. It actually stands out quite a bit on the shape that we're currently looking at. Every object by default, every shape has a very small outline. And you can see here, it's kind of in a greeny color. And again, you can customize this outline. So if I click Shape Outline, I might want to choose something that's a bit brighter. So I'm going to select this light blue like so, which looks quite nice. And I can also adjust the thickness of that shape outline as well. So again, back into shape outline. And this time I'm going to go down to weight. And I'm going to make this a little bit thicker, three points. And there we go. And I can even go as far as to customize the type of outline. So currently I have a solid outline, but I could go into shape outline go down to dashes and I could choose any one of these. So I'm going to say, uh, let's try the rounded dot. And you can see I have a completely different effect now on that shape. And finally, we have shape effects underneath. And this is where you can do things like add shadows, add reflections. And I'll just show you a reflection so you can see. We kind of now have a little bit of a reflection effect, which is actually quite a nice effect. Um, but I'm going to take that off. So let's go back to shape effects, go back to reflection, and I'm going to say no reflection. So it's worth having a little play around with those shape effects as well, because there are some really good visual elements in there. Now with this final shape, I want to show you one more thing. And we did touch on this earlier on in the course, and that is using the eyedropper utility, which you'll find underneath shape fill just here to fill the background. And what the eyedropper does, just as a reminder, is it will allow you to select any color that you have on your slide and use that as the fill. So it might be that you want to use this background color, or it might be that you want to use color that's in a different object. Even if you have something like a piece of clip art or a picture, you can use eyedropper to kind of suck up the color that you want to use from that picture and use it as a fill. And that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to very quickly just insert a picture into this slide. So up to insert, down to pictures. I'm just going to select one that I have on my PC. So let's do this one again, the coconut trees. And it's quite a large picture. So I'm just going to resize that down and put it over here in the corner. So now what I can do is I can click on my shape. I can go to my shape format ribbon. I can click on shape fill and I can use the eyedropper. And now you'll see that as I scroll over this picture, it's showing or it's picking up all of the colors in that picture and I can choose any of these colors. So let's go for this dark green and it will fill the shape with that particular color. I love that utility. It is fairly new in PowerPoint. I think it came in in 2016, but it's really nice just to get a cohesive look to all of the colors on your presentation. And the final thing I want to mention is if you want to use a picture as the fill here. So 
with this picture just here, if I was to drag it on top of here and try and fit it in, I mean, maybe I could with a lot of fiddling around, it's not going to look too great. And it's not really fitting exactly into that shape. So we can do it a slightly different way. Let me just delete out this picture and I'm going to click on my object. I'm going to go to shape format. And again, I'm going to go down to shape fill, but this time I'm going to select picture. I then get a choice. I can choose something from a file or online picture. So I'm going to stick with the picture we were just using. So I'm going to say from a file. I'm going to select the picture and click insert. And you'll now see that that picture is exactly inside that shape. And I could go in and change that shape outline as well, just so it looks a bit nicer. And that gives a really, really nice effect. So it's worth knowing all those different techniques of how you can fill shapes and objects. So hopefully that gives you more of an idea of how to work with fill. Let's go over to the second part and continue with some of these formatting options. So I will see you over there. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to take a look at formatting objects and we already began this exercise in the previous module. And now we're going to focus on some of the more advanced objects, particularly again related to fills. So when we left off in the last module, we just put this picture inside this shape, which looks very nice. And we're going to highlight this uh, second shape that we have here, the one that has the word about inside. And I'm going to jump up to my shape format ribbon and we're going to go down to shape fill again. And we're going to concentrate on some of these options that we haven't looked at very thoroughly so far. So I'm going to jump down to gradient. And this is where you can add a gradient fill and you can see you have different variations of it. So light variations and also darker variations as well. So you can always choose one of these and that just gives a nice gradient effect to the fill within the shape. Let's jump back up to shape fill again. And the option underneath that is texture. And this gives us some tiles with some various different textures inside. And I don't tend to use these too often because a lot of the time I've got text within my object and these sometimes make it quite hard to read that text. But just so you can see, we're going to select, uh, let's select this one here, the green marble. And that one's not actually too bad. It's quite dark so you can still see the text through. So those are pretty much all of the options that you have within that shape fill drop down. Let's move down to looking at some of the options that we have within shape effects. And before I do that, I'm just going to click on the sun shape that I have down here. Go to shape effects and let's look at what we've got in here. So the top one are some presets which are inbuilt into PowerPoint. And again, if you hover over each one, you can see those different effects applying to that sun shape. And some of these are really quite nice. And it is worth having a little play around with them to see if there's any that you think would work in your presentation. The next one down is shadow. So this is if you want to add some kind of shadow effect to your shape. And again, as I scroll over, some of these are fairly similar, but you should be able to see that you get a kind of a very slight shadow on your object. And of course, if you don't want a shadow at all, you can make sure that you have no shadow clicked. Now, reflection is quite a nice one. We did look at this a little bit earlier. But you can see here, I can, if I select this one, for example, you can see that I now have that reflection effect and that can sometimes look really nice on your pictures as well. We then also have below that glow and this will allow you to put kind of like a, a nice glowy area around your object. And again, if I hover over, you can see the different ones as I go through the live preview. So these are definitely worth having a play around with. Now, again, if you don't like these glow variations, you do have the option for more glow colors and you can select any color from the palette or more colors if you want to. And then finally, at the bottom, you also have glow options and this will open up the pane at the side and it will just allow you to make some further, more granular customizations to your glow options. So I can change, for example, the size of that glow if I want to increase it or decrease it. And I can also change the transparency so I can make it quite opaque or very 
transparent. So those are your more advanced glow options. We have an option for soft edges. So again, you can see very slightly as I hover over, some of these are more dramatic than others. In fact, that one, it disappears entirely. And you may decide that you have a use for these. So it's worth having a little look and a little play around with them as well. The next one is bevel. So as I hover over the live preview, you can see that some of these actually make this shape look quite nice. In fact, I quite like that first one. So I'm going to select round. And then the final option that we have in here is 3D rotation. So that will allow you to rotate your shape or your object around through 360 degrees. And we also have some perspective options as well. So loads of ways that you can really apply some really nice effects to your shapes and to your objects in your presentation. Now it's also worth noting that these aren't the only options that you have. You do have a whole host of advanced options as well. And as always, you can access your advanced options by clicking on the little arrow in the corner of that shape styles group. And you'll see as I hover over, it does say format shape and it says make fine tuned adjustments to the look of your shape using the format shape task pane. So when I click on this, I get that helpful pane pop out to the side. And currently I'm clicked on shape options. So we've got shape options and text options. Now, because I am clicked on a shape, it's taken me straight to the shape options. And the first one that's highlighted is this fill. So the little bucket icon just there. And again, this is where I can choose what kind of fill I have in my particular shape. So I've got no fill, I can have solid fill, gradient fill, so on and so forth. And we've seen some of these already. I'm just going to stop on gradient fill for the moment because you'll see now that underneath I get a whole host of other options which are really going to help me customize the way that my gradient looks so I can get it really really specific. So I have some preset gradients in here and I can also choose the gradient type so linear, radial, rectangular, so on and so forth and each of these just differ very very slightly. I can also change the direction of the gradient. So if I want it coming out from the center, I could choose that one from bottom left corner, so on and so forth. And then underneath here, I can change the color of my gradient. So maybe I want it to be a purple and I can choose my gradient stop. So you'll see as I drag and drop this, it either gives me more or less of the gradient. And I can also drag the yellow one to give me more or less of the yellow as well. So really highly customizable. So I'm gonna put it about halfway because I think that that looks quite nice. You then have some additional options at the bottom. So things like transparency, if you want to take the transparency up or down, you can, and also the brightness of your fill. So let's scroll all the way back up to the top. So you can see that there are quite a lot of options in there, which can get a little bit overwhelming. So the best thing I would advise is to just jump in there and have a little play around with all of them. So you get comfortable and familiar with what each one does. So the next icon here is effects. So if you remember, we were in shape effects before. So this is your advanced options for your effects. And again, it really does depend on what effects you have added. So I have glow added to mine which is why glow is expanded. So again, I could go in and I could change the color of the glow if I wanted to. So I could change it to black. And I can also change the size of that glow. So I'm actually gonna take it down because that's actually quite big at the moment to four points. And again, if I wanted to, I could increase or decrease the transparency on that. Now I'm not gonna go through all of these. You'll find you have very similar options for each of these effects. So whether it be shadow, reflections, soft edges, so on and so forth. So just have a little experiment and a little play around. And the final point I want to make here is in regards to pictures again. So say you have a situation where you have a picture that you want to work with, but not necessarily in PowerPoint. So maybe you have a picture that you want to add onto a website or a web page that you have. Maybe it's a blog. What you can do is you can copy and paste that picture into PowerPoint and you can utilize PowerPoint's tools. So you can utilize the effects, the outlines, the fills, all of the options. You can edit that picture and then you can save it off or cut and paste it 
back into your web page or the other application that you're using. So it's a really nice way of being able to edit your picture before you use it in another application as well. So I just wanted to highlight that because I've done that quite a lot of times and I actually find it really useful. So speaking of pictures, we are going to be talking more about pictures in later modules. But first of all, we're going to be talking about arranging objects. That's in the next module. I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to be talking about arranging objects and what we mean when we say arranging objects is really just making them look neat on the slide. So once again, I'm clicked on slide four and I've just removed a couple of the additional objects that were on there to just leave me with these three standard objects. And we're going to take a look at how we can align these objects both on the slide and also against each other. Now, essentially on this slide, I have five objects and that's because I include these arrows as well. So each of these three shapes are one object and then the arrows are objects as well. So essentially I have five on this slide. Now, what I'm going to do here is really just tidy up the way that this looks and make everything look consistent, cohesive and all aligned. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the formatting from this first object across to these other two objects. And we've seen how to do this already previously. We can use the Format Painter utility. Now, if you remember what I said in one of the previous modules is that if you just click the Format Painter once, it will allow you to paint the format to another object just one time. So if you have more objects to paint, in this instance I do because I need to paint three times, then you can double click that Format Painter. So first of all, make sure that you're clicked on the object which contains the formatting that you want to copy. So welcome in this case. Double click on Format Painter and then click on your second object. And you can see the Format Painter is still active so I can just go and click on the third object to copy that formatting across. Now currently I'm still in Format Painter mode. I can see that because I have the little paintbrush icon. So to come out of that, I can click the Format Painter icon again, or alternatively, I can just press the Escape key on my keyboard and that will take me back to a normal cursor. So they look a bit nicer now. They're a little bit neater and they all are the same. But what I really want to do now is to line up these three rectangles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all. And again, if you remember from a previous module, we can draw our net and that will select every single object within that net. Now, it's also selected the two arrows and I actually don't want to line those up, not in the same way that I'm going to be doing the rectangles anyway. So to deselect just these two arrows, if I hold down my control key, and just click on the objects, that will deselect. So now I just have the selection that I need. Now there are a few different ways that you can align objects. And as we're already on the home ribbon, we may as well use the options on this ribbon. So you'll see in the drawing group, we have an arrange dropdown. And all the way at the bottom, we have a position objects and we have an align option. And this shows you all the different alignment options that you have. And it has very little useful icons next to them. So you can see how your shapes are going to align. So I could choose to align them to the left, to align them to the center or to the right. And these top three will align your objects up and down. These three align top, align middle and align bottom will align your objects across. So for this, I'm going to say align them to the top of the highest object. So I can see here the about rectangle is the one that's highest. It's above the other two. So if I select a line top, the other two are going to jump up to align with the top of the tallest object. So let's do a line top. And there we go. So now I really want to deal with the two arrows. So I'm going to select those arrows by clicking, holding down my control key and clicking again. I'm going to go back to arrange down to a line and this time I'm going to select a line middle. 
and that aligns both of my arrows to the middle. Now, one other problem you might come across, and it's not actually too bad in this slide that we have here, is the spacing. So you might find that you have bigger spaces in between your objects which aren't consistent and you just want to make sure that everything is distributed evenly. So once again I'm going to draw a net around my objects to select all of them. I'm going to go up to a range, I'm going to go down to a line and this time I'm going to use this option here, distribute horizontally. And I don't know if you saw there, there was a very slight movement with those arrows just to make sure the spacing is exactly the same for each of them. And I can now click off. So now I've aligned the individual objects, what I might want to do is just align all of the objects on the slide. So at the moment it's kind of in the top uh, towards the left hand corner and I want this to actually be centered on my slide. Now there's a couple of little useful utilities in here which will help you with that and you'll find them on the view ribbon and the first thing I'm going to do is say turn on guides and you'll find guides in the show group and when you click it what you'll ordinarily get are these two guidelines and those guidelines will be positioned at zero so essentially this is going to help me align all of my objects I'm going to draw my net and really if I want to align this what I'm aiming for is to move this center one, so the center control handle in the about, that's the center of this object, of this grouped object. So I really want to align that and place it on this guideline. So I can pick up my objects and I can try and roughly position them in the right place. If I let go, yeah, I'm not too far off, but if you do need to make some minor adjustments, so I can see that this group of objects needs to go a little bit to the left to make sure it's exactly on that guideline, you can do what we call nudge the objects. If you hold down your control key and then use your right or left arrows, so in this case I'm going to use left, and I can just nudge that along and place it exactly over the top of that guideline. I can then do the same but for the other way. So if I want to grab my objects again, when I drag it down, I'm really going to want to align with the center control handle just here. So I'm going to grab my objects and I'm going to move them down and let's let go and see where we're at. And wow, that looks pretty good to me. So again, remember if you hadn't got that quite correct, you could use your nudge, the control and your arrow keys. And when I click off, that's pretty much my objects aligned in the center of my slide. I'm just going to turn off guidelines, so I'm just going to click in that checkbox again. And just direct your attention to the option above, which is grid lines. And there is a shortcut key for this, it's Shift F9. But we're going to select the checkbox. And this will turn on your grid lines. Now, what I tend to use this for is if I have some um, other smaller images, so maybe some clip art or a picture, and I want to make sure that I've got those lined up with other objects on the screen. And these can be quite useful for doing that. So remember that you have those grid line options in there, which will just assist you when you're trying to line up objects on your slide. And I'm going to turn my grid lines off. Now let's talk about one other thing. Say I want to put a background picture behind the objects that I have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a picture into my slide and you should be used to doing this by now. We go up to insert, I'm going to go down to pictures and I'm just going to use this picture here and click insert. Now that's quite a large image so I'm just going to drag the corner handles in and resize it slightly and I'm going to move it over the top of my objects. So you currently can't see those objects behind. Now, the way that you have to think about this is that PowerPoint works in layers. So the layer at the front here is the picture and there's a layer behind which contains the objects. And you can essentially move the layers backwards and forwards to either show or hide the objects. So again, up on our picture format ribbon, you'll see in the Arrange group we have options for Bring Forward and also Send Backward. So I have my image selected at the moment and I'm going to say Send to Back. And you can see immediately what that does is it moves that layer, that picture layer, 
behind the object layer. So I can now see those objects in front. In the next section, we're going to talk about playing with transparencies just so that you can make the objects stand out a little bit more. And I'm also going to show you how to do things like lighten up the picture. And we're also going to talk about things like grouping. So all of that is in the next section. I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this module, we're going to be talking about grouping objects, which is really going to help you when it comes to working with lots of different objects that you have on your slide. In the previous module, we left off that we had a picture behind these five objects that you can see here on slide four. And I've actually just removed that picture in order to show you a little bit clearer how grouping works. Now, before we get on to grouping, just something which I want to let you know about. In the previous module, we were talking about aligning objects on the screen, and we aligned our objects in the center of this slide. Now, one thing you might notice is that those two green arrows are not actually aligned to the center of the rectangles. We literally, when we aligned them, we aligned them to the middle. So that's really in relation to each other, so that they were both along the same kind of plane, shall we say. But now I want to align them so that they move up slightly, so they're in the middle of those rectangles. So again, all I need to do is to select all of my objects, so not just the arrows, I'm going to select the whole lot by drawing my net. I'm going to go up to the Arrange group and down to Align, and I'm going to select Align Middle. And you'll see immediately that both of those arrows jump up. Because I've got all of the objects selected, it knows that those arrows need to be aligned in relation to the other objects on the slide. And now I have them perfectly in the middle. So now let's move on to talking about grouping objects together, because it's sometimes easier to work when things on your screen are grouped together and you can move them and edit them in a uniform way. So I'm going to start out by grouping all of these objects. So currently they're all individual. So if I click on them, it just selects that particular object. And I want to group them all together. I'm going to draw my net again around all of my objects. I'm going to go back up to that arrange group. And this time I'm going to select group. And what you'll see immediately happens is that I now have a placeholder around the entire group of objects. And it means that if I click and drag, I'm now moving them as one. And another useful thing here, which is a fairly recent addition to PowerPoint, is that if I want to make sure that I place this exactly back in the center again, if I move across slightly until I get that red dotted line running down the middle, and then start to go down, until I get a horizontal line, I can see that that is exactly in the middle when I let go. So that's a really nice way of moving things as one object. If you want to ungroup again, just go back up to Arrange, and you see that now I have the Ungroup option available. I can click it, and then now back to being individual objects that I can move around independently. Now it's worth noting that when you're grouping objects, they don't have to be lined up. So these ones are all in line, but maybe I have a couple of other objects on my slide which aren't necessarily in line. So let's draw some more objects. So I'm going to do, let's just do this 12 here, and I'm just going to draw that down here. And let's add another one. I'm going to add, let's add a cross. I'm going to add that in the top corner. Now, these two objects you can see here in green aren't aligned. They're not together, but that doesn't mean that I can't group them. All I would need to do is to select both of the objects. So I have the cross selected already. I'm going to hold down my control key and click on the other green object. I'm going to go to arrange and I'm going to group. And now these two objects are grouped and I can move them together as one. So just remember that you don't have to have them next to each other in order to be able to group them. Now I'm going to quickly ungroup those two and I'm going to delete them. Now let's take a look at another example. I'm going to add another object and this time I'm going to add a star. So let's add the 16 point star and I'm going to draw a fairly small star down in the corner and I'm going to just modify that by dragging that handle in like so. 
Now, if you remember, we previously discussed how you can duplicate objects. We press Control D on our keyboard, and now we have a duplicate of that star. So maybe I want to drag this star all the way over to the other corner. And again, you can see I get those useful red guidelines which show me that I'm exactly lined up. And I'm going to drop it. And if I wanted to, say, group these and then move them to the top of the slide, I can do that in the same way. So hold down Control and select the other object, up to the Arrange drop-down and go to Group. And I can now move these as one to the top of the screen. And I'm quickly going to ungroup those. One final thing I want to show you is, again, if we make some duplicates of this star, and I'm going to do quite a few, so I'm just going to carry on pressing Control D until I get quite a few stars. It might be that I want to line these stars up in some way. So I'm going to draw a net around them because that is by far the easiest option to select them all. I'm going to go to Arrange. I'm going to go down to Align, and this time I'm going to say Align Center. And now I have those stars running down. I could then group them. So back to Arrange, go to Group, and I can now move them as one to wherever I want to on the slide. I could even, if I wanted to, rotate them and make them look slightly different. So that's how you can group together multiple objects and move them in one go. And that's a really good efficiency tip. It's really helpful when you're moving lots of things around on a slide. So that's it for this module. In the next module, we're going to be doing an exercise. So I will see you then. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. We've made it all the way down to exercise five. And in this exercise, there's a few different things that I'd like you to do for me. And as always, we have some very clear instructions. So first of all, what I'd like you to do is open the file called Practice Presentation 6. I'd like you to add a new slide using the blank layout. And the first thing I want you to do is to take all of the background graphics off of the slide. I then want you to draw a few objects, so those are objects of your choice. It doesn't matter which ones you choose. And I'd like you to go over the formatting options that we've discussed and get familiar with them and where they're located. Make sure that you do play with the fill and the line and effect options. I then want you to take a few of your objects that you've drawn and practice grouping them and also ungrouping them. And then finally, I'd like you to add a picture of your choice inside one of the objects that you drew. I then want you just to save and close that file down. So that's it. Give it a go. See how you feel. And I will see you in the next section. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. So far in this course, we've looked at a number of different options when it comes to pictures, inserting them and also manipulating them very slightly. And I'm back on slide two where we have a picture and I'm currently clicked on it, so it's selected. But some of the things that we haven't worked with with regards to pictures are things like changing the colors or cropping. And we're going to look at some of these basic utilities just to change the look of the picture. Now, this picture that I have here on slide two, it's OK, it's not great, but I could make some changes just to make it stand out very slightly from the rest of the slide. This picture has quite a blue background, and because my slide background is also blue, it doesn't really have the impact that I'm looking for. So I want to apply some formatting to this picture, really to enhance it and make it jump out at the audience. Now you'll notice that when you're clicked on a picture, as always in any of the Microsoft applications, you get a contextual ribbon. And if you glance up to the top of the screen, you can see we have this picture format ribbon. Now, if you're not really sure what I mean when I say contextual ribbons, they're ribbons that only appear when they're needed. So you'll notice that if I click on something else on here, so maybe if I click on the text, I now get a shape format contextual ribbon because that relates to the object I'm currently clicked on. If I click back on the picture, 
I get my picture format ribbon and this contains all of the options related to formatting this picture. So maybe something I want to do with this picture, just to make it stand out a little bit better, is put a border around the outside. And if you look in the big group in the middle, the picture styles group, you see I have three options just here, picture border, picture effects, and picture layout. So let's jump up into picture border. And what you'll notice immediately is that this is pretty much the same as the options that we got when we were working with shapes. I have my theme colors so I can change the color. I have standard colors and I can also do things like use my eyedrop utility, change the weight, so on and so forth. So I'm going to select a color for my border and just to make this stand out, I'm going to make my border white. Now you can see that it has put a very thin border around the outside and remember you can play around with the thickness of that border. If we go back up to picture border and down to weight, I can choose something that's maybe slightly thicker just to make that stand out even more. So I'm going to go for three points and you could also, if you wanted to, change the way that that border looks. So currently I have a solid line, but I could have a dotted line or rounded dots. I could have squares so on and so forth. Now, I quite like the solid border, so I'm just going to select that one. And now you can see that that picture kind of jumps out from the background. It's not blending in as much. Something else I might want to apply are picture effects. And again, we've seen these when we were dealing with shapes. So I could do things like add a shadow, and you can see we have an outer shadow, we have inner shadows, and we also have perspective shadows as well. So if I look at these at the bottom, because they are the most dramatic, I could add a perspective shadow, which just gives me a little shadow in the corner there, which can sometimes look quite nice. Let's go back to picture effects. I could add a reflection if I wanted to. So why not? Let's do that. I could add a glow around the outside. I could add some soft edges if I wanted to. And I could also make the picture slightly beveled. So I'm going to add a round bevel. And then the final option in that menu is 3D rotation, which allows me to rotate that picture around. Now, I don't particularly want to do that, but just be aware that those options are there if you need them. Now, when you do start adding formatting to pictures, sometimes you might add so much formatting and you just think to yourself, "Ugh, you know what, I just want to reset it back to how it was originally. Unfortunately, there is an option in PowerPoint in order to reset it back to its default settings. So I've got my picture selected. I'm going to stay on my picture format ribbon. And in the adjust group, you have a reset picture option. And I can choose just to reset the picture but I can also choose to reset the picture and the size. So if I'd made some sizing changes, if I've made it bigger or smaller, I can choose to reset that back to the default as well. Now I'm happy with the size. I just want to remove all that formatting that I've applied. So I'm going to say reset picture and it takes me back to how it originally was. One other thing to notice is that you don't just have these options here when it comes to applying formatting to your picture. You do also have some helpful picture styles which you can select from the gallery. And again, if I roll over some of these, you'll see them apply in the live preview. And some of them are really nice. That's quite a nice one, reflective rounded rectangle. So it's worth having a look in here and just having a little play around and seeing which ones you want to apply. I could even make it circular if I wanted to. Now I quite like the rounded rectangle with the reflections. I'm going to select that one. So many of those options for the picture are the same as what we've already looked at when it comes to formatting shapes. So really jump in there and have a little play around. In the next module, we're going to be looking at cropping pictures. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, I'd like to discuss cropping pictures. And if you've never come across that word before, cropping, all that means is that sometimes there are areas of a picture that you want to keep and areas that you want to discard. 
So we're back in our presentation and we clicked on slide two and I've clicked on the picture that I have in here. So I have a man standing on a what looks to be a cliff edge looking out across the horizon. Now this is quite a nice picture, but it might be that I want to crop out some areas of the picture. And there are a few different ways that you can utilize the crop utilities in PowerPoint. So let's take a look at all of them. So I'm going to jump up to the picture format ribbon and right in the group on the end, in the size group, you'll see we have an option for cropping. Now I'm going to select this first one here, crop. And what you'll see is it puts these black markers on my picture. And what I can do is if I wanted to crop some of these background out, I could drag this in and maybe drag this down so there's less sky. And if I click away onto the slide, it's going to crop that picture to those specified dimensions. Now it's worth noting when you do crop, you haven't actually deleted anything. The picture that you've cropped out is still there. It's just essentially hidden. Let me show you what I mean. If I click on the picture again and click on crop, you'll see that the picture is still there in the background. So if I wanted to pull it back, I could like so, click away, and I've changed my crop. So when you're cropping, you're not actually affecting the size of the file. If you think that by cropping out large portions of your image, that's going to decrease your file size, that isn't the case. So that is definitely worth bearing in mind. So I'm actually going to put this picture back to how it was. So I'm going to go back to crop. I'm going to go to crop and I'm just going to drag that handle back up again. Now, another option that we have when it comes to cropping is we have the option to crop to shape. And this is quite a nice option. It just means that you can select any shape from your shapes library. So I'm going to select this oval and PowerPoint will crop it to that particular shape. So you can see there that actually gives quite a nice effect in this presentation. But again, remember, you haven't actually deleted anything. I could put it back to rectangle if I wanted to. Now that's all well and good. Those are a couple of really nice cropping options. But what if I wanted to go a step further and actually remove all of the background from this picture? So maybe I just want to have this picture where I have the guy standing on this mountain, but I don't want any of the sky or the horizon. How can I specify parts of a picture to crop out? Well, we have a couple of ways of doing this. Again, if we jump up to the picture format ribbon, you'll see the first option that we have is remove background. And if I just hover over that for one second so you can read the screen tip, it says automatically remove unwanted portions of the picture. If needed, use marks to indicate areas to keep or remove from the picture. Now, the success of this really depends on the type of picture that you have. Some pictures are a lot better to use than others. Now the picture I've got here is actually quite a complicated picture to use, which is quite good for this example, because I'm just gonna show you how you can get around the difficulties that this picture presents. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna click remove background. And what PowerPoint will do is it will make a kind of guess as to what I want to remove. Now, as I said, this is quite a complex picture. If this was a clip art or something that was a lot simpler, then it would probably get it right the first time. So when I clicked remove background, it would probably exactly select the background that I want to remove. Now, in this case, it hasn't. You can see here everything that's showing in purple is currently what's going to be removed from the picture and everything that isn't in purple is going to be kept. Now this isn't quite right in this instance. I don't want any of this sky. I just want to keep the guy and the mountain that he's standing on. So this is where I can then utilize these refinement options. If I look up on my background removal ribbon that I now have, I can go in and mark areas to keep. So this is basically allows me to draw lines and tell PowerPoint which parts of the picture to keep. So I'm going to select that. And this is a bit of trial and error. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky, but there we go. I've selected the guy and let's try and select this mountain as well. And as I said, sometimes you have to play around with this a little bit to get it exactly how you want it. So I'm going to carry on drawing my lines. 
And now I want to remove this sky. So I'm going to go to Mark Areas to Remove. And we're just going to draw a line down the middle here. And up here. And also down here. And let's see if we can get this little bit in between there. There we go. So now I've pretty much isolated the man on the mountain from the background. And all I need to do now is click away and I've completely cropped out that background. So that's a really nice way of doing it. And now it kind of looks like he's sort of floating in mid air. If I wanted to, I could then move the placement of this to make it look a little bit better, like he's coming in from the corner if I wanted to. So let's do that and let's just move this over very slightly. So that's a great way of just being able to crop out that entire background and make your pictures a little bit more interesting. As I said, it is a little bit of trial and error sometimes with this. Now I'm actually going to move him back over here so we can use him in the next section. I'm just going to replace my objects around. I'm going to move him just here and I might decide to make him a little bit bigger as well. And there we go. Those are the three different ways that you can crop a picture. In the next section, we're going to discuss some formatting options that we can use now that we've cropped our picture. So I will see you then. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. So far in this section, we've looked at lots of different ways that we can manipulate and format pictures. So we've looked at basic ways that you can enhance pictures, and we've also looked at cropping. So now we're going to move on to some more formatting options. And what I want to do here is I want to put in a new slide and add a completely new image or picture. And I want this slide to be slide five. So I'm going to jump down and select slide four. I'm going to go up to new slide and I'm going to choose the title only layout. And you can see that that is now slide five. I'm then going to insert a new picture onto this slide. So up to the insert ribbon and I'm just going to insert one that I already have saved off. So I'm going to jump down into pictures and I'm going to select this boat image and click insert. And let's just drag that down. Now I'm going to add a quick title. So let's call this optional activities. And I have my boat picture here, but again, I have all of that white background, which I don't particularly want. It doesn't look great. So just as a bit of a recap, let's remove that background. I'm going to go back to picture format and I'm going to select the remove background option. Now, as I said, some images are simpler to use than others. And this is a fairly simple one because it's a plain white background and it's a reasonably simple image. I can see though that I do need to make some small adjustments because currently it's going to crop out the sides of this boat. Remember everything in purple is what's going to be cropped out. So all I need to do is mark areas to keep and I'm just going to say this little area just here and also this one just here and that looks pretty much exact to me. And I'm going to click away and there I have my image. And I'm just going to resize that ever so slightly and just move it up. So that looks pretty good. Now there are some additional options you have when it comes to working with images. Let me click back on my picture and up to the picture format ribbon. And you'll see in the adjust group, we've already looked at remove background, but we have some other options in here that we can utilize. So let's click the drop down underneath corrections. And this is where you can make some other minor changes. And you'll see as I hover over, those changes apply in the live preview. Some are more obvious than others. So these ones I can sharpen or soften the image. I can change the brightness like so and the contrast as well. So really go through, have a little look at those and pick the one that best suits your image. I also have at the bottom here some further picture correction options. So if I click on this, it's going to open up that pane on the right hand side where I can go in and make some more adjustments if I want to. So I can make the image sharper. I could adjust the brightness up and down and I can also adjust the contrast if I want to. You also have in there that reset option, which will allow you to reset the image back to how it originally was. 
just going to close down that pane. The next one on here is color. So this is going to allow you to change things like the color saturation. And let me just move this picture so you can see it as I'm doing this. So back to color. So I can change the color saturation, different levels of saturation. I can change the tone. And I can also do things like recolor it if I want to. So if I hover over, that blue one actually looks quite nice. So I'm going to select that. Again, within color, I have three more advanced options at the bottom. So I have more variations if I want to select a completely different color that isn't already available in the list above. I can set transparent color and I can also open up my picture color options, which as we just saw, allows you to go in and refine some of these settings. So really you can edit this to your heart's content. What we also have is some artistic effects. So again, I don't tend to use these too often, but you might find a use for these. So I can make it look like it's been drawn in pencil or maybe a pencil sketch. I could select any of these that I want to. So I'm gonna say, let's just add a line drawing like so. Now, before we move on, I just want to highlight these three options as well. This first one here, compress pictures. Now remember, every time you add a picture into your PowerPoint presentation, you greatly increase the size of your presentation. So if you plan to email this presentation or you have a lot of pictures in it, then the file size is going to be quite large. So it's a good idea to go through and compress any pictures that you have just to try and keep that file size as low as possible. So I have some compression options in here. So I can say compress this picture only. If I wanted to compress all of the pictures in my presentation, I could just untick this checkbox. The one below is actually quite an interesting one. If you remember when we were cropping pictures, I said to you that it doesn't actually remove the background that you've cropped. It's still there. And so therefore the file size doesn't decrease. If you did want to permanently remove any cropped areas of picture to keep that file size down, you could make sure that you've got that option selected. Now, I don't want to do either of those in this instance, so I'm just gonna click cancel, but just make a note that that option is there. I could also change the picture. So if I change my mind and I want to replace the picture I currently have, I could just go in and select a picture from a file or from an online source. So let's quickly do that. Let's go to online sources. And I'm going to search for a boat and hit enter. And I have lots of different pictures of boats down here. So let's switch it out for a speedboat and click insert. And there we go. And again, I could go in and do exactly the same as what I did with the previous image. I could delete out this background. So let's go to picture format, remove background. And that's pretty much perfect. So I'm going to click away. And there we have our speedboat. And that last option in this group is reset picture, which as we've seen before, will just reset the picture back to the original settings and discard any formatting changes that you've made. So that's it for your additional picture formatting options. In the next section, I want to really make use of some of the things we've talked about and start working through how you can layer pictures and also some other cool things that you can do. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to be talking about some additional things that you can do with pictures. So we've already done some formatting and some cropping, but now I want to show you some cool things you can do when you mix and match pictures and use pieces or parts of pictures to create entirely new images. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new slide and this is going to be slide number six. So I'm clicked on slide five. I'm gonna go up to new slide and I'm just gonna add a new blank slide. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a couple of images onto this slide. So let's go up to insert and to pictures. And I'm just going to select some that I have saved off. So the first one I'm going to select is this camera image. And I'm gonna click insert. So once again, this camera, it's a pretty nice image, but it has that white background that I want to remove. 
So I've clicked on the image and I'm going to select Remove Backgrounds. This is something we've done quite a lot already. Now I can see that PowerPoint hasn't picked up exactly what I want to remove, so I'm going to mark areas to keep just by dragging a line down here and all the way down here and hopefully we'll get towards something that looks like the image that we want. And let's draw a diagonal there. And that looks a little bit better. So I'm going to click away. And there I have my camera image. Now, one cool thing that you can do is to combine images together to make a really effective image. So what I'm essentially going to do here is I'm going to insert another picture and I'm going to put it inside the camera lens. So let's go back up to insert and down to pictures. And I'm going to grab my old favorite, the coconut trees image and click insert. Now let's just resize that down by using the control handles and move it over there. Now currently this image is rectangular, it's not going to look too good if I put it inside. So what I want to do is I want to make this into a circle so it's going to fit nicely inside this image. And if you remember, we spoke before about that option of crop to shape. So if we jump up to the picture format ribbon, go all the way across to crop, we have that crop to shape option. And I'm going to go to my basic shapes and select the oval which crops my picture down. Now it's still not quite the right shape, but what I can do is just move it across and I can start to make some adjustments. So I might want to drag it in to make it more circular. And I can really just start to refine that down so that I get it so that it fits exactly inside that camera lens. And click away. And there you go, that looks so much more impressive than just having the two individual images. I could also, if I wanted to, add something like a text box. So let's jump to the home ribbon, click our drawing tools and select the text box shape from our basic shapes. And I might want to say in here that this is a picture of Sri Lanka. And I'm gonna drag and drop that on top of my image. I could then go in and do some formatting changes. So maybe I want the word Sri Lanka in all caps. So I could go up to my font group, click on the arrow in the corner to bring up my advanced options. And one of them is all caps and click on OK. And I also might want to make that bold. And there we go. Very quickly, I've utilized some of the techniques that we've already seen, combined them and made an entirely new image. Let's look at another way of doing this. I'm going to add another blank new slide. So up to new slide and down to blank. And I'm going to insert two images this time. So up to insert, down to pictures. And I'm going to insert this hot air balloon and if I scroll down, I'm also going to insert this travel frame. So I'm going to hold down my control key so that I can select both of them and click insert. And again, these are quite large, so I'm just going to drag them down and reposition them so I can see them both. Now let's deal with this frame first of all. Now I want to get rid of a lot of this background, not all of it, but a lot of it. So I'm going to select it and click on the remove background button. And it's done not too bad of a job. I'm going to mark a few areas to keep. So I want to make sure I keep the top of the Eiffel Tower and I want to keep Big Ben. And the rest of this looks pretty good. I'm not too concerned about the planes flying around the outside. I really just want this central image. So I'm going to click away and there I have quite a nice frame. And what I want to do is I want to place this hot air balloon inside this frame. Now I'm going to make it slightly smaller and I'm going to move it across to this image like so. Now what I want to do is I want to remove the white background from this hot air balloon and I can do it whilst it's placed inside this other image. So once again, let's click remove background 
mark areas to complete and I'm just going to make or refine my selection to make sure I get all of that hot air balloon in and I think we have some pieces down the side we need to include and I think there's another little bit of the side there like so and the basket at the bottom and click away and there we go. So once again, I've made a really, really nice looking image by combining two images together. Let's look at one final option. So let's insert another new blank slide. And this time I'm going to insert an image of a person. And I'm going to use this image just here and click insert. And let's make it a little bit smaller. And we're going to pretend that this lady doesn't know which trip she should book. So again, I'm going to crop out this background by clicking remove background. And I'm going to mark my areas to complete to refine this. And I think there's also an area at the top of her head that I need to include. And that's good enough for me at the moment. So I'm going to click away. And we have her there, so she's looking pretty good. And what we can do is combine our image here with some shapes that we used earlier. So maybe I want to have a call out, or a thought bubble, I should say. And I'm gonna change the color of this in a moment, but remember that you can adjust where this call out is coming from. So I might want it to look something like that. And then I'm going to add some text into here. So she might be saying, uh, I just don't know which trip to book. And I'm going to make some changes to this text. So I'm going to make it a bit bigger by using my increase font size. And I'm also going to change the color of this speech bubble. So up to shape format. And I could use any of these shape fills, but I might also want to use my eyedropper utility and hover over the image. So I'm gonna pick up this sort of slight gray lilac or lavender color. And there we go. Now, once I've done that, I might decide that I want to change that font as well, make it a bit darker. So I'm gonna go back into my font and I'm gonna make the font a dark purple. And I can also see that I have an outline around my speech bubble that doesn't particularly match. So I'm gonna to go to shape format, shape outline, and I'm gonna do a dark purple there as well. So very quickly, I've been able to make some really nice looking slides just by mixing and matching and combining some of the techniques in relation to shapes and pictures together. So it's definitely worth having a little experiment and a little play around with those. You can really unleash your creativity in this type of thing. So that's it for this module. All that's left for us to do now is our exercise. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. We've made it through to exercise 06 and as usual I have some instructions that I want you to do. So first of all I'd like you to open the file called Practice Presentation 7. I'd then like you to add a new slide using the blank layout and I want you to add a picture of your choice from the internet and I would recommend finding one that you think you can easily crop. I want you to crop out the pieces of the picture that you don't want and I want you to practice formatting the picture. I then want you to get creative. I want you to try adding one or more additional pictures and combining them and using them together to make a visually appealing slide. Once you've done that, I'd like you to save and close the file. And that's it. I hope you get on okay with that and I will see you across in the next section. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to be talking about smart art and smart art might be something that you've never used before or in fact, never even heard of. So I'm just going to start out first of all, just talking a little bit about exactly what it is and how you can use it. 
So I've added a slide into my presentation, slide 10, it's the one you're currently looking at, that shows the board of directors for Wanderlust Travel. And this is a really good example of how you can utilize SmartR in your presentations. You can see here, I've got a very nice kind of organizational chart or diagram, which shows the pictures of the directors. It has their title and their name underneath. And this is really simple to create. You'll see when we go in, there's a whole host of different types of smart art diagram that you can insert into your presentations. And it's a really nice way of representing information in a visual way with very little effort. Now, when you're using SmartArt, there are two ways that you can use it. You can either directly add it to a blank slide, or you can already have some generic info typed out on your slide and then convert that to a SmartArt object. So we're going to look at how you can utilize both of those methods. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new slide. So let's jump up to new slide and I'm going to select title and content. And I'm going to add a title in here and we're going to say this is going to show the team members. And then you'll see underneath in my content slide, I have all these different pieces of content that I can add. And one of them is insert a smart art graphic. And this will take me into my smart art graphics library. And as with everything in PowerPoint, they're all categorized. So it really depends on the type of smart art that you're looking for. So currently I'm showing all of them and there's a whole heap of them in there. If I'm looking for something, or maybe I want to display information in some kind of list, I have my options for that. Process, this is good for showing sort of process flows. So in this presentation, maybe something like the, the booking process. I have cycle, hierarchy, so that's good for organizational diagrams. Relationship, matrix, pyramid, and this one contains all of the smart art diagrams where you can have a picture. And that's basically what I want to use in this example. I want to add in my team members and I want to show their picture as well. So it's really just a case of going in and selecting which one of these is going to be appropriate. So I think I'm going to choose this one down here, which is a vertical picture accent list. And I'm going to click on OK. And that gives me the basic bones of my smart art diagram. So I can come into here and I can type my text. So I'm going to list out my team members. So we have Brian, Fosling, we have Heather, Ganniston, and we have Stacy, who. So I have the names listed, but now I want to add their pictures. And it's worth noting, if you are going to add pictures, you can search for online pictures. But if this is a, a real world situation, most likely you're going to want to save off your team members pictures in order to add them into the presentation. So I've already done that. So I'm just going to click on this icon in the middle here. And this is where I can select from a file or online. So I'm going to jump straight to from a file. And the first one is Brian Fosling. So I'm going to select Insert. I'm going to do the same for Heather Ganniston. And then finally, Stacy Who. Like so. Now it's worth noting that these have come across fairly good, but if you wanted to adjust these pictures, so maybe they weren't quite centered or maybe you were chopping off too much of their head, you can go in and crop these images. So if I wanted to crop this one, if I click on the image and jump up to my picture format ribbon and go into crop, it's going to allow me just to drag that image in and out so I can make it a little bit wider. I can move it up and down just to make sure it's exactly centered in that frame. And very quickly, I've been able to create something that looks really, really effective. So that's how you can create a smart art graphic from scratch. You can insert your title and content slide and select smart art from there. Incidentally, if you did have a blank slide, so let me just insert a blank slide so you can see what I mean where I didn't have those icons to insert SmartArt, I could just go up to the Insert ribbon 
and I have the option to insert a SmartArt diagram from there. So I can build it up from a blank slide as well. Now I'm just going to delete that out and I'm actually going to insert another title and content slide because I want to show you a slightly different way of doing this. So this one is going to be testimonials. So we're going to have some customers listed in here. Now it's worth noting that not all SmartArt has to contain a picture. There are many SmartArt diagrams where it's just purely text. And what I want to show you now is how you can take some text that you already have on a slide and then convert that to a SmartArt object. So I'm going to add on some testimonials from different people. So I'm going to say the first one here is Adam Lacey. And I'm going to put their job title underneath as well. So I'm going to say sales director. I'm going to do shift tab to get my first level bullet. And the next one I'm going to put is Mish Na. And we're going to say that she is a creative director. Shift tab to take me back. We're going to say James one and he is the marketing director and I think we'll just have three on there for the time being. So if I had a list that looks something like this and I wanted to convert it into a smart art object all I would need to do would be to highlight the text and you'll see on the home ribbon in the paragraph group we have a convert to smart art button. So let's click that. And I can then go in and select whichever one I want. And I can't actually see the one that I want to use in here. So I'm going to jump down to more smart art graphics. I'm going to go to list and I'm actually just going to choose this very plain one here, the lined list and click on OK. And there you go. You can see now that it's added those in for me. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can utilize those smart art diagrams to really give some pizzazz to your presentation. They're so simple and such a quick way of putting in charts, process flows, lists. And you can see how you can start from a blank smart art graphic and also convert things that you already have on your slide into smart art graphics. In the next section, we're going to be furthering this idea and we're going to take a look at how you can modify your smart art graphics. So that's what's up next and I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to start to take a look at modifying smart art. So this really carries on from the previous module where we added some smart art in. I'm now going to show you some of the options that you have when it comes to changing elements of your smart art and editing it. So I'm currently clicked on slide 12 and this is the line object or line smart art diagram that we added in the previous section. So I'm going to click on it and just show you a couple of other options that we have. The first one I want to show you is if you look down on the left hand side of where I'm currently clicked, you'll see that there is an arrow pointing out to the side. Now if you click this, what you'll get is a little pop out, which is showing you the text that you have in your smart art diagram. Now you'll see this on some smart art objects that you place into your slides. And this is quite useful because sometimes depending on the layout of the smart art diagram, it can be quite hard to edit some of the pieces of text. So if you have this little pop out, it makes it a lot easier. So I could come in here and I can make some changes if I wanted to and it will update in my smart art diagram. So don't forget that you have that little text pop out to make any changes that you need to. Now, one of the things that you might want to do is that if you've added a piece of smart art like I have here, it might be that at a later time you change your mind and you maybe want to change the layout of that piece of smart art. Well, it's okay. You can still do that even if you've got another piece of smart art already in the slide. So let's jump up to the Smart Art Design ribbon. And you'll see that in the middle there, we have a layouts group. And if I just click that more drop down, this allows me to switch to any of these different layouts. And you'll see as I roll over, I'm getting a live preview in the slide behind. So I could go through and I could select any of these. 
If I didn't fancy any of these which are currently showing, I could click on more layouts at the bottom, which will pop up that entire smart art gallery. And I'm currently clicked on all, so I can scroll through and find the piece of smart art that I want. Now I'm fairly happy with choosing one of these which are available in the layouts menu just here. So I am going to choose, let's do this one here, vertical box list. Now once I do that, I have some other editing options on my SmartArt design ribbon. So let's pay attention to these SmartArt styles first of all. I'm going to click the more drop down again. And you can see what PowerPoint has done is it's looked at the smart art and the text that I have on this slide and it's given me a selection of five smart art diagrams or five smart art layouts, I should say, which would best suit the text that I have. So I've got here my best match for document items. And if I hover over, you can see some of these. And I also have down here some 3D effects as well that I could use if I wanted to. Now I'm just going to choose this one here, the subtle effect, like so. What I could also do is change the colours of my smart art diagram. So if I click change colours, what I'll see here are some primary theme colours at the top. So these are really the ones which are best suited to the theme that I've selected. I then have some colourful themes. I have some with different accents for different colours. So you can go through and choose whichever one you think is suitable for your particular diagram. So I'm going to mix this up a little bit and I'm going to select colourful accent colours. Now a couple of other things of interest on this ribbon. If you look all the way over to the left hand side where you have the create graphic group, what you'll see here is that you have some buttons that are active. So for example, this button here where it says move down. This is if you want to reorganize the order of the items in your list. So I'm clicked in Michael Lacey and you can see that move down is active. So if I click that, it's going to move that item down into the list and I can click it again to move it down again. And of course, I also now have move up so I can reorganize. So remember that you have those in there as well. I also have some demote and promote buttons. So if I click demote, it's going to demote Michael Lacey from a top level heading to a second level heading. And let me do promote and that will put him back to where he was. So you do have some additional options in this little group for managing and manipulating that smart art graphic. Now, if you get way into this and you find that you've made lots and lots of changes, remember, if you just want to get back to basics, if you just want to reset everything and remove the formatting that you've applied, you do have a reset graphic option right over in the right hand corner and that will discard all of the formatting changes you've made. And then finally, on the end here, you have a convert button. So, so this will allow you to convert your smart art diagram back to just plain text. So in this case, a bulleted list. I could also convert to a shape if I wanted to so that it can be resized, moved or deleted independently of the remaining shapes. Now, I'm not going to do either of those two options. I'm going to leave my smart art diagram as it is. Now, one of the really useful things with smart art diagrams is the ability to create a flow chart. So instead of drawing all the boxes and the arrows, you can use a smart art diagram. And that's what we're going to look at in the next module. So I will see you then. Hello again, and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In this section, we're going to take a look at how you can use SmartArt to create a flowchart. Now, flowcharts are a fairly common thing to add into PowerPoint. And what you'll find is the way that most people do them is that they add the individual shapes in order to build up that flowchart. So you might add a few rectangles, you might add some block arrows in between them to show some kind of process and you might add some text within those rectangles. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do it that way, but it is quite time consuming, particularly if the chart is quite large or quite detailed. So why not take all the pain out of it by utilizing SmartArt and you can have it done in just a few clicks. So that's what we're gonna work through in this module. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new slide. So up to new slide, 
and I'm going to select title and content. Now I'm going to give my slide a title and what we're going to display here is the booking process. Now I'm just going to have three items in my booking process and I'm going to type them underneath here and have them as bullets. So the first one is going to be find trip. My second bullet is going to be book trip. And my third item is going to be pay deposit. So those are essentially the three steps of my booking process. So I'm now going to convert this list to a smart art process chart. So I'm going to highlight all of these. And if you remember up on the home ribbon in the paragraph group, we have this option here, convert to smart art. And I can go through and I can select any one of these. Now I'm looking for a specific process flow diagram. So I'm going to go into more smart art graphics. And let's just move that up out the way. And you can see one of the categories is process. So this is sort of where I'm going to find some of the options that I might want to use. So I can have one which is just a basic process chart or I can make them more complex if I like. So let's have a look. Let's choose. Let's just do this very basic one just here. And I'm going to click on OK. And there we go. Really quickly, I've just managed to make that process flow chart. Of course, remember that once you insert your SmartArt graphic, you then have the SmartArt design ribbon, which opens up all of those formatting options. So I might want to go in and very quickly change the color. So I'm going to make this consistent with my previous slide and just add the colorful accent colors. I'll leave the rest of the options for you to play around with, but hopefully you can see just how simple that is to very quickly create a process flow diagram. Now, one other thing I just want to point out whilst I'm here is the ability to add more processes into this. So, for example, if I want to add another one onto the end here, so maybe after pay deposit, they have to pay balance. I'm going to click on my final uh, shape. I'm going to go up to the Smart Art Design ribbon. And in this first group, you can see I have add shape. So I'm just going to click that and it adds another one onto the end. And I can just go in and say pay balance. So I can do that for any of these. If I wanted to insert one in the middle, I would just need to make sure that I have the book trip selected. Then when I add a shape, it's going to appear in between book trip and pay deposit. So nice and easy to add more in once you've got that smart art diagram there. So that's pretty much it for Smart Art and how you can utilize it in your PowerPoint presentations. We're now going to do an exercise to make sure you're OK with everything that we've covered so far. So I will see you then. Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2019. In the preceding section, we've spoken a lot about smart art and working with the different elements of smart art. So in this exercise, I want you to utilize some of those skills that you've learned. So let's take a look at the instructions. I'd like you to open the file called Practice Presentation 8, and then I would like you to add a slide using the title and content layout. I'd like you to type in the title, our team, and then I'd like you to type a bulleted list using these names. So we have Felicia Klein and she's the president. We have Ben Lee and he's the vice president. And we have Phil Yang, who is the treasurer. I then want you to select that list and convert it to a smart art object. I'd like you to change the layout of the smart art object to one of your choosing. And then finally, I'd just like you to save and close the file. So give that a go and I will see you in the next section. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the PowerPoint 2019 course exercise and instructor demo files, click over there.